This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. On April 29, 1985, the Orlando Renegades faced the New Jersey Generals at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey, for a Week 10 matchup in the USFL's third season. The Renegades were coached by Lee Corso in their first season in Orlando after having transferred the franchise from the Washington Federals in 1984. New Jersey was coached by Walt Michaels and entered the game with a 7-2 record atop the USFL's Eastern Conference. This game had additional significance as it was being played just when the USFL had won its antitrust suit against the NFL. This allowed the league to schedule their 1986 season with games in the fall. The decision doesn't affect this game specifically, but the broadcast does involve quite a bit of discussion with executives on the future of the league. This includes an extensive fourth-quarter in-game interview with General's owner, Donald Trump. This audio recording is from the WABC radio broadcast, featuring announcers Charlie Steiner and Dave Herman. They really have, Charlie. And this is one thing that I was talking to Donald Trump about. He wants to know why is it that the offensive line is getting better at this particular point in the season. I tried to tell him, and I did tell him, that the offensive line has a lot of teamwork involved executing their plays. The more you play together, the better you're going to be. And obviously, with the situation with the generals, they've got some real fine football players, led, of course, by Ken Hall and Wayne Harris. The standby, the guys have been in there for the longest period of time, but the other guys surrounding them, Stroth, Mackey, and Mag, make for a very fine offensive line, one of the better offensive lines in this league. Well, the Orlando Renegades have won the toss and have elected to receive. The Renegades are attired in white uniforms with blue piping and numerals. The generals will be in their familiar home uniforms, the red jerseys, white numerals, white pants, and red pipes. And again tonight, we're not going to see John Joyce. Bob, you had a chance to talk to him right before the game, did you not? I talked to John Joyce. He is on the sideline here. Of course, he's not dressed. He's been working hard and rehabilitating his knee. He feels that he's uh, he can run straight ahead and back up pretty well with it. He's in a brace, but he can't go laterally, and that's the big thing he needs as a linebacker, that lateral movement. He feels that he's still going to be questionable next week against Jacksonville, but he is improving each day. The referee for tonight's game, Bill Parkinson. The umpire is uh, Carl Pagawelli. The headlines been Hayden Terry, the line judge Larry Hill, the back judge Chet DiStefano, the side judge Ted Colano, and the field judge is Bob Van Toot. Jerry Parrish is standing back at his own five-yard line, anticipating the kickoff from Roger Ruzek. Coming up at halftime, the commissioner of the USFL, Harry Usher, and more about today's meetings in Teaneck. In the second half, Donald Trump will be joining us in the General's broadcast booth <laughs> to talk about the General's aspect of this uh, very big story out of Teaneck, New Jersey, of all datelines today. Donald is welcome anytime he stops by. That's right. <laughs> his bats and balls, aren't they? Here's Ruzek making his way toward the football, and we are underway. It's a gorgeous night in the Metropolitan area. Parrish, two yards deep in the end zone, running straight ahead to the 10 to the 15, and he is down shy of the 20-yard line. The General's special teams once again doing the job as Frank Mattias came up to make the tackle along with Kyle Borland. And Kyle Borland was a great story for the Generals last week, replacing the injured John Joyce. He was the leading tackler with 10. Yeah, he was, and i got to tell you, that's got to be a good credibility to Walt Michaels and his staff, and a good thing for that young man, too. He has the opportunity to play, and when you get that opportunity, it's up to you to make the most of it. He obviously did last week, as he did on that one particular play right there, covering special teams as well as playing number one inside linebacker. You wonder why Orlando's 2-7 and seven on the opening play. They had 10 men in the huddle, and hurriedly they brought in Ricky Clayton. And now he's on a wing to the right with Bledsoe, the single setback. Collier, the quarterback, the handoff is to uh, Bledsoe off right tackle. He gets perhaps four yards to the 24-yard line where it'll be second down and six yards to go. Emmanuel Weaver made the tackle for New Jersey. And we're going with a new strong safety tonight. Donnell Daniel is in the game at strong safety for John Preston. John Preston, as we know, along with John Joyce, is the leading tackler on this uh, New Jersey general football team. They may miss him tonight. Bledsoe and Clayton are split in the backfield. Jackie Flowers flanked to the right. And Joey Walters to the left on second down and six from the Orlando 24. Clayton is backed up behind the line of scrimmage. And he is brought down by oh. Kyle Borland and Jim Burns. And he was brought down uh, by Maurice Clemens as a guy that really come in there. And that Borland and, and, and Burns put the put finishes on it. But it was Clemens up, coming up straight up making that tackle. An outstanding hit by Maurice Clemens playing another linebacker position there. So it's third down and seven, a loss of one on the play at the 23-yard line. Jeff Smith and Jerry Parrish are now the wide receivers. Flowers is in as well, so you have three wideouts. Make it four wideouts. Walters, Smith, Flowers, and Parrish on third and seven. Collier from the shotgun. 
back to throw, throwing over the middle. He completes it to Curtis Bledsoe to the 31-yard line. That'll be enough for the first down, the tackle made by John Miller. That was the short pass. They had every receiver split out wide, and they just came to the man over the middle. The linebackers took a good drop. The big thing tonight is Reggie Collier. He's been the difference as far as Orlando and his football this season thus far. They've got to contain Reggie Collier. He likes to run the ball, and it looks to be that... Uh, they're trying to run the football early against their opponents. They tried it last week against Jacksonville with not much success already. They've run the ball two out of four downs against the Generals. Out of the I formation now, the Orlando Renegades first and 10 at their own 32-yard line with a backfield split. And off to uh, Clint. Clint is out to the 35-yard line. Kyle Borland again in on the tackle. It will be second down at about five yards to go. Let's call it a pickup of four and make it second and six at the 36-yard line. Bob, you mentioned how dangerous a Reggie Collier can be. He throws that short pass pretty well. He doesn't have good control on the long ball, but the thing that makes him dangerous is the fact that he can run the football. If the, 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 if the passing lane breaks down, he can run the football and be effective. Walters flying to the left, Flowers to the right, backfield is split, second and six, Orlando at their own 36. Hand off to Curtis Bledsoe, stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the 34-yard line, Mike Weddington was there, along with Kyle Borland and Mo Clemens. Beautiful job by Borland, filled in from the middle linebacker position, just stepped up in the hole. Nobody took him on, and he had one-on-one -on -one with, with a running back that time, Bledsoe. But the interesting thing is they're trying to run the football, and the reasoning there has to be similar to Memphis last week. Let's control the ball on the ground, keep it away from the generals. Let's not give their offense, especially their running game, too much time on the field. The generals rank seventh in the league of 14 teams against the rush 119.9 yards against per game and on but the fifth or sixth play from scrimmage Orlando is forced to call a timeout 11 minutes 13 seconds to go quarter number one no score from Giants Stadium in the Meadowlands we'll be back on the New Jersey Generals Football Network <laughs> Boardwalk in Atlantic City, first class costs no more when you go to the centerpiece. Trump Plaza Hotel Casino. A glittering world of glass, brass, and class. And best of all, this place is right in the center of the action. You're listening to New Jersey Generals Football on WMCA New York. Brought to you in part by the Alfa Romeo President's Group. Automobiles built for the fun-loving rich. And you, if you hurry. Orlando third and seven from their own 35. Collier out of shotgun throwing long down the sideline for Jackie Flowers. Incomplete. He nearly got his hands on it at the 21-yard line of New Jersey, but the ball falls harmlessly incomplete. In on the play defensively, Kerry Justin along with Gregory Johnson. So on fourth and seven, Greg Cater, the second leading punter in the USFL, averaging nearly 43 yards per punt, his longest of the season, 64 yards, ready to punt it away to Danny Knight, who is standing back at his own 22-yard line to our right. 11 minutes, seven seconds to go. First quarter, no score. The General's about to get their first possession of the evening. A good snap from center, and Cater with a high, spirally kick that is fielded by Knight into zone 20, cutting at the 25, and down he goes at the 25-yard line, where the Generals will have so-so field position for their first possession of the game. First and 10 to go. 10 minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the first quarter. That was a 45-yard punt for Greg Cater, just a couple of yards over his average. But hold the phone. Flag on the play. Let's see what that's all about. Somebody was downfield, Charlie, before the ball was punt, and Fred McAllister, number 53, was downfield before the ball was punt. It looks like Walt is going to take the ball right where it is now here on the 26-yard line for the Generals. And with the change of possession, there's a timeout on the field. 10-57 gone. First quarter. Generals and Orlando are scoreless. We're at Giants Stadium, and we'll be back.
Happy birthday, Thunderbird. That's right, it's T-Bird's birthday, but you get to open the presents. Right now, during your Ford dealer's Thunderbird birthday party, you can save hundreds on every new Ford car or truck in stock. Open a special LTD Brome package and get $926 off on a four-door LTD. Equipped with air conditioning, AM FM stereo, tilt steering wheel, speed control, and more. Savings based on manufacturer's suggested retail price of option package as compared to pricing of options purchased separately. So see your Ford dealer today for Thunderbird birthday savings on a luxuriously equipped LTD. But hurry, because come May 1st, the party's over. General's first to 10 play from their own 26-yard line. A quick opener to Bo Carthine out to perhaps the 28. A pickup of maybe two yards on the play. It'll be second down and eight as Bernie West, the left side linebacker, came up to make the tackle for the Renegades. Clock running, 10-15 to go first quarter. This is the General's second play of the game. Carthine and Walker in the I formation with Clarence Collins flanked to the right. Two tight ends in the lineup now. Hand off to Herschel, running off left tackle, looking to turn the corner. Hey, here goes Herschel, down the sideline. Walker is knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line, but way back at the line of scrimmage, there is a penalty marker. However, I think it's against Orlando. And I think you're right, Charlie. I think they're going to get him for jumping off sides, and it's going to go against Orlando, and already they run the sweep on second down and nine, and he picks up a ton of yards. What a football player Herschel Walker is. you got to give Mo Carson credit yes, on that sir. particular play because he was right down there leading the block for Herschel Walker, enabling him to get outside and get the yards. It was an offside against the Orlando Renegades. The Generals have the first down and 10 to go at the 40-yard line going in. Walker enters the game with 1,006 yards. You can tack on an additional 32. <laughs> That's not going to hurt. Generals first to 10 to go at the Orlando 40-yard line. Again, the I formation. Walker the deep back. And once again, flanked out to the right, Clarence Collins. And out to Herschel, this time running right. Turning the corner. Herschel is finally brought down at about the 31-yard line. He picked up only nine that time. And you got to give credit to Walton, his entire coaching staff, and Bob knows this better than anybody. When you have a football team that has 10 days between football games, you really have to wonder, can you get them ready and peaking at the right time? Defensively, they certainly were ready, and it looks like offensively they're ready here just, just as well. But I got to tell you, Dave, walking into the locker room a couple of hours before the game time, everybody was talking about this Teaneck meeting today. They wanted to know what was what. And I got to tell you, I was wondering whether or not their concentration had been altered by the events of the USFL over the past couple of weeks. Here's Flutie back to throw on second and one in his own 31, throwing sideline incomplete, intended to the far sideline at the 15-yard line for Clarence Collins. But Flutie had to rush the pass, so it'll be third down and one for New Jersey at the Orlando 31-yard line. Getting back to Walt Michaels and how he prepares his team, he now is in the second half of the season. He's very conscious of bringing players along. He knows the long haul better than anybody. And he's got these guys. He's trying to save their legs. He's been practicing on the grass field outside the stadium. I think they're ready. Generals are a 54% efficient team on third down. They're third and one at the Orlando 31. Carthen and Walker stack up in the I formation. And up to Herschel, looking to circle the end. He got the first down, and then some. Herschel still on his feet. He finally manhandled out of bounds at the 11-yard line. He picked up 20 more. You oh. can't, you, you can't, you know, you don't appreciate him unless you're down here. Well, you're right beside but, him. What was it like? It's, it's like a blur. But, oh. I, I mean, the speed is fantastic. He's oh. really just cruising along, and he's just getting great blocking up front. We say a lot about Maurice Carthon. He's outstanding, but let's not ever forget Sam Bowers. He's the guy that creates the block to the tight end side right on the corner, and he has done an excellent job this year. This Walk man truly has world-class speed. You know you forget about that as a football player. He's got great speed. He's like a runaway refrigerator oh. heading downhill from Mount Everest. It's first and 10 at the 11-yard line. Hand off to Herschel, looking to circle left in. Barely finds a crack and gets to the 10-yard line. A pickup of one, second and nine. Herschel so far tonight, four carries, 62 yards. When you look at this football team, the Orlando Renegades, they do not match up on their defensive line. The guys playing there are 260, 255, 250, and 255. When you turn that around and look at the size and the strength and the finesse that this offensive line of the Generals has, you can anticipate Herschel having a real big night. He's already got a start. General second down and nine at the Orlando 10. 
Once again, out of the eye. Pitch out to Herschel, running right. Looking to turn the corner. Herschel gets inside the 10, down to about the 8-yard line, where Kelvin Atkins, the left side linebacker, came up and made the tackle. we got to watch for this play. That time he pitched the ball back to Herschel, and Flutie came opposite him and just sort of hung around. i got to believe we saw this play earlier in the year, that that pass is in the books, and we may see it, even from Herschel Walker throwing back to Doug Flutie one of these times. Generals now, third down and seven at the Orlando eight. They would have to get down inside the one-yard line. Speck is in the lineup. Broughton flanked to the left. Collins to the right. Generals in the I formation. Carthen and Walker, third and seven from the eight. Here's Flutie, stopping, throwing, completing. The Jeff Speck short of the first down, however, inside the five to about the four. That was a move. That was a bootleg. That was a cold bootleg. He came out, and the defensive end held his position. He knew he couldn't run with the football. He pulled up, and he hit his tight end coming across. It's the way he pulled up. He pulled up to it from a dead speed, stopped, and just threw that ball underhand off sidearm and got the ball to Jeff Speck. An outstanding athletic move. It's really nothing more than an extra point try. The snap, the place, the kick is perfect, and the generals are on the board. Leading three to nothing with six minutes and 34 seconds to go in the first quarter. You're listening to the New Jersey Generals Football Network. So it will be a touchback in quarter number one. A giant stadium in the Meadowlands and we'll be back. First and ten to go for Orlando. They're up to the 40-yard line now. And on a neat move by... Collier, he completes it to the tight end Bob Nizelik into General's territory for the first time up to the 47-yard line where it'll be first and 10 for Orlando. Collier's one of those to give a lot of encouragement. If he gets started and he starts to play well and he completes some passes, he can be dangerous all night long. But you're going to stop him right away. The last two times that, the, that he had the ball in this series, he's played very well from the quarterback position. It may have been somewhat self-serving, but Lee Corso, the head coach of the Orlando Renegades, said that Reggie Collier is the prototype quarterback of the 80s. Time. Five and a half minutes to go, first quarter, Generals 3-0. Orlando first and 10 of the General 47. Collier back to throw. Going long down the sidelines for Ricky Flowers, and it is intercepted by Gregory Johnson. Johnson returning it to the 20. And he has knocked down at the 36-yard line of the Generals. First and 10 to go for Gregory Johnson, his second interception of the season. And that was a great play. He's the free safety. They tried to hit the receiver deep down the sideline. The quarterback, Justin Beat, as he threw the ball up, Johnson came from center field, as he's supposed to, came over, perfectly timed, and intercepted that ball. And he, the Generals were both on their heels a little bit. But two first downs back-to-back. -back. That interception is costly for the Renegades. Gregory Johnson, his second intercept of the season, and for the Generals' secondary, it is their 12th pickoff of the year. So now the Generals, first and 10 to go, at their own 37-yard line in the first quarter. They are marching from right to left. They line up again in the I formation. Carthen and Walker are deep. Clarence Collins flanked to the right, pitch out to Herschel running right. Walker turning the corner. Walker out over the 40-yard line, flag on the play. Walker down at the 41-yard line. However, there is a flag at the 49-yard line away from the play. That's, that's the back judge who threw the flag. Holding was... against New Jersey. Oh, that was a long way. He's got better eyes than I got. That's a long way to throw that. The back judge threw it way down by the defensive backfield. Caught the Jer Jersey offensive line in a holding situation. But going back to that play, again, you have to look at the compliment out there between Maurice Carthen and Herschel Walker. Big Mo leading that time and knocked the linebacker completely flat on his back. I mean, that's a tough thing to do from your fullback position. And Mo Carthen does it very, very well. So the Generals now find themselves in a first and 20 predicament back at their own 27-yard line. Walter Bratton flying to the left and Clarence Collins to the right. In the I formation, now Carthen and Walker decide to split the backfield. Flutie calling signals. Generals leading 3 0 first quarter. Once again, now, Walker goes back into the deep I formation. Hand off to Herschel. He's going to be stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. It was David Graham, the left tackle, along with Scott Hutchinson, who stacked up Herschel for a loss of about three on the play. They are going to key on Herschel Walker all night long. They've known what has been effective for the Generals in terms of winning the last ball game, and it's been running of number 34. You're going to have to look for him. You'll see him coming, blitzing linebackers and six secondary people. That would certainly seem like it was set up a play-action pass of some sort. 
It is second down and a very long 22. Back at the 25-yard line, Carthen and Walker split in the backfield. Broughton flank to the left, Collins to the right. Flutie back to throw. Flutie with time, throwing over the middle, and he completes it. Out to the 41-yard line, where it was Clarence Collins who made the reception. Clarence Collins split to the right side, comes down and does a deep curl, turn-in pattern, gets back to the football, makes the catch, crucial, crucial catch against five defensive backs. They brought Mike Guest, the nickel back into the game. Flutie had good protection, stayed in the pocket, and found his man open as he curled to the football. Generals pick up 18 on the play, so it is third and five out to the fairly respectable 42-yard line from the I formation. Flutie back to throw. Flutie is rolling on a naked bootleg. He has got the first down. He stepped out of bounds at the 48-yard line. He had to get to the 47. And that is what Doug Flutie has been doing so well the last three or four ball games, Charlie. He's not been trying to force this passing situation. He takes advantage of his speed whenever he has an opportunity, and he's made several big plays just like that, getting first down and getting a couple touchdowns by his running ability. He's a very fast young man when it comes to running with the football. Clarence Collins now flanked out to the right. Carthen and Walker stack up in the I formation. Bowers and Speck are the tight ends. Hand off to Herschel. Give it to Herschel. See Herschel run inside the 50, down to about the 48-yard line. Only a four-yard pickup that time for Mr. Walker. It'll be second down and six. Ron Freeman, the middle linebacker, and Orlando's leading tackler made the play. Only a four-yard pickup, but way ahead of schedule as far as the running game goes. But they came with two tight ends that time, Speck and Bowers. That creates a problem for the defense. That forces them to bring that outside linebacker who's accustomed to playing the split end side up on the line of scrimmage. General second down and six at the Orlando. 48, and again the I formation, and once again Speck and Bauer is on the offensive line as tight ends. Hand off to Mo Karth on the up back in the eye, and Mo picks up maybe two yards on the play as Freeman and Graham, Freeman the middle linebacker, Graham the left tackle make the play. Just the nature of their defensive line, having four down defensive linemen versus the usual three down defensive linemen, is going to make it tougher for Maurice Carthen to run the football from his fullback position. They're going to give it to him several times tonight just to keep that defense honest, but the effectiveness is going to come from Herschel Walker from the eye back position where he gets a better read of the offensive lineman's block. Broughton and Collins now flank out to the left side. Carthen and Walker in the I formation on third down and four for the Generals at the Orlando 46. Flutie back to throw. Rolling left, stops, looking to get rid of it. He does sideline incomplete. He threw it out of bounds. His intended receiver on paper at any rate was Clarence Collins, but Flutie is doing something now over the last three or four weeks that he was unable to do the first three or four weeks, and that is throw it out of bounds and get out of trouble. Absolutely, absolutely. He's done that well. Remembering back to when they, the team would get in trouble, it was when Doug would try and force the situation, make the completion happen when there was excellent coverage downfield. That time again, he threw it out of bounds, and that's a step of maturity as far as I'm concerned about Doug Flutie. Fourth and four for New Jersey. Rick Partridge averaging 39 yards per punt, standing back at his own 40-yard line. The line of scrimmage is the Orlando 46. Victor Jackson standing at his 10-yard line to our left. A minute 58 to go, first quarter, Generals lead 3-0. Awaiting the snap from the long snapper, Russ Mitchell, and the Generals have taken too much time. I guess they were hoping that perhaps Orlando would jump the gun, they did not. And so the delay of game penalty, and so at this point, really, the difference between 4th uh, and 4 and 4th and 9 is academic. It really doesn't make that much difference, considering where the ball is placed. And now it's going to be almost on the 50-yard line. He can get a 45-yard punt out if he's doing a good job of punting right now. And it'll put the generals in pretty good field position if they get the coverage they expect out of this punt team. Wind isn't much of a factor no. down there, is it, Bob? None at all, Charlie. It's a perfectly cool night, and it is no wind at all. Rick Partridge now will punt it away one more time, standing back at his own 35-yard line. And it looked like Orlando may have jumped the gun that time, but no flag. Victor Jackson fielding the ball at the 15-yard line, cutting up the middle, and he's brought down at the 25-yard line. Frank Mattias is in on the tackle for New Jersey. We have a break in the action with a minute and 35 seconds to go in quarter number one at Giants Stadium in the Meadowlands, where the Generals lead the Orlando Renegades three to nothing. We'll be back on the New Jersey Generals Football Network. What is it about Alfa Romeo that has commanded the loyalty of four generations of Europe's and now America's best families? Can it be the excitement of a car that devours a mile in less than 30 seconds? Can it be the sumptuous Italian self-indulgence that Alfa Romeo's radiate? 
Can it be the warranties for Alpha, including an optional six-year, 60,000-mile dealer warranty? Yes, it is all this, and something more the rich would rather you didn't know. Alpha Romeo is a bargain. There is an Alpha, for instance, for the scandalously low price of $13,495. And none is higher than 20,000. Now, the aristocracy may not be happy to see you at their Alfa Romeo dealer, but you walk right in. And if anyone should ask, tell them you want one of these um, the toys for yourself on the chauffeur's day off. 57. Renegades break the huddle. It's first and ten to go at their own 25-yard line. They line up in the I formation with Bledsoe the deep back, and the handoff is Curtis Bledsoe, and he gets to the line of scrimmage, and that is about all she wrote, as Kyle Borland once again in on the play for New Jersey. And they had a miscue out there from their offensive center. He went to go fire straight ahead, and his feet slipped out from underneath him, and actually the running back tripped over the top of his offensive center as well as Borland getting him. Again, you come back to Borland, though. He's made outstanding contributions since been put since he's been put in there in place of John Joyce. He's making himself feel that it felt as a real football player for the general defense. Hey, he killed the generals the first two years when we were visiting them in Michigan. Here's Collier back to throw, and he just missed the tight end, Nizalek, at the 34-yard line. Danelle Daniel is in on the play defensively, so it'll be third down and nine at the 26-yard line. If you have just joined us and missed the news about the big USFL powwow today in Teaneck, New Jersey, the league reaffirmed its position. They will be moving to the fall of 1986. John Bassett and the Tampa Bay Bandits have opted to leave the USFL at the conclusion of this season and apparently go their own way. But you know, when, uh, if, it's only, if it's only Tampa Bay, you know that the Bandits are guaranteed a playoff spot next year. <laughs> Third and nine at the 26. Collier back to throw, throwing it and completing it to Joey Walters, who is grabbed upside the head by Jerry Holmes and brought down ruthlessly at the 39-yard line. A pickup of 13 on the play. First and 10 to go for the Orlando Renegades at the 39-yard line. Their own 39. That will likely be the last play of the first quarter with the clock running 20 seconds remaining. They came out at five with five receivers that time. Collier stayed in the pocket, got a good rush, but got decent protection and waited for Walters to come underneath the receivers. They cleared out the area. Man-for-man -man coverage with Jerry Holmes on his back. I misspoke. This will be the last play of the quarter. Clock running. Three, two, three. One, and Collier is back to throw. Throwing quickly sideline for Nizalik. He completes it, and Nizalik is wrestled out of bounds at the 49-yard line of New Jersey, where the first quarter has come to an end, with the Generals leading the Orlando Renegades 3 to nothing at Giants Stadium in the Meadowlands, and we'll be back. Hey, fans, if you haven't been out to see Doug Flutie, the record-breaking Herschel Walker, and the rest of the playoff-hungry Generals, here's what's coming at you next. Sunday, May 12th, it's Mother's Day, and at 2.30 p.m., it's Star Wars, USFL style, with the 84 champion Baltimore Stars invading Giant Stadium with Chuck Fusina and Kelvin Bryant. Don't forget to bring Mom, it's her day. On Saturday night, June 1st, 7 o'clock, the Generals host the Memphis Showboats and the USFL's number one passer, Walter Lewis. Also, two lucky couples will win round-trip airfare compliments of Pan Am by coming in their best European costume from France, England, Germany, or Italy. I know I won't want to miss that. Gates open at 5.30 and concession stands open early, too. Stadium Club opens for members at 4.30, so come out, enjoy dinner or a snack, and see some great action. June 1st, Saturday night at 7, the Generals in the Memphis Showboats. Advanced sales at Ticketron Outlets or at the Meadowlands Arena box office Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6, Sundays from noon to 5, or call 935-3900. Day of game tickets on sale at Giant Stadium ticket windows three hours before game time. Come on out. The Generals want you. Well, the first quarter is in the books, and the Generals have a 3 to nothing lead. It was a fairly uh, efficient first quarter for Herschel Walker. Seven carries, 66 yards, including his first run of the ball game, which uh, was a nifty 32-yarder. Orlando, uh, only 73 yards of offense in the first quarter, 66 in the air, seven on the ground. 
Generals had 76 yards of rushing, 66 of, from Walker, 22 yards in the air, courtesy of Doug Flutie. And Orla Orlando's passing game again comes back to those intermediate zone passes. And the ones that not the flat pass and not the deep stuff, but out there where the linebackers are. Every team we've seen play against the Generals have had some success in this particular area. And again, coming back to this quarterback, Reggie Collier, you can't let him get going, get a, get a full head of steam underneath him, get him confident because he can hurt you if he has his game on. They particularly use their tight ends very effectively that first quarter. We might see more of it. The short, intermediate sideline cut working on Donnell Daniel playing at strong safety for the injured John Preston. So it is first and 10 to go for the Orlando Renegades with the ball at the general 49-yard line. Hand off to Curtis Bledsoe straight ahead for maybe three yards to the 47. Pick up a, let's call it three, second down and seven yards to go. And the generals obviously are thinking run when they line up on that first down deep, first down on defense because they've got their both linebackers up on the line of scrimmage on the outside linebackers and the inside linebackers playing very tight. So what we're really looking at is almost effectively a seven-man line to stop that run and they've been stopping it pretty well in first down situation. Second and eight they call it at the 48-yard line of New Jersey with Bledsoe the single setback. Eccles and Nizalik two tight ends hand off to Bledsoe straight ahead and Bledsoe picks up maybe two more yards to the 46 where it'll be third down and six yards to go. Very interesting call on second and long. Now they're going to come up with a third and about six yards to go. The Generals come with a fifth defensive back into the game. That's Terry Daniels. Be interesting to see how they attack it. They've come to the tight end. They've come to the wide receiver. Joey Walters coming underneath the coverage with five receivers out. And there will be four wideouts employed by Lee Corso on this play. Walters, Smith, Flowers, and Parrish. Third down, a long five at the 45-yard line. Collier lines up in the shotgun formation with Parrish in motion to the near side. Collier back to throw. Being rushed. Throwing over the middle, completing it to Walters at the 41-yard line. We'll see where they mark the ball. Got Actually, the they're going to mark it all the way to the 39-yard line where it'll be first and 10 for the Renegades. Again, the short time pattern, as Dave mentioned, the short time pattern where the receiver just turns back the ball is there. Very hard to defend against. And also with receivers like Walters, they're very quick to get into the seam. They're just controlling the football with short, controlled passing game. Henry Odom checks into the running back uh, position for the Renegades. He's 5'9", 205 from South Carolina State. He joins Curtis Bledsoe. They're split in the backfield, first and 10 at the 39-yard line. And now Bledsoe lines up as a deep back in the eye formation. Hand off to Odom, the up back, and he crawls along the ground. Odom picked up only one on the play, second and nine at the 38. Collier back to throw, stopping, throwing, intercepted. and it's intercepted by Donnell Daniel, who spins at the 40, has the ball on the outside, and Daniel Daniel may go all the way. Daniel is run out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Uh -oh. What a bad throw by Reggie Collier, the quarterback. The intended receiver never even saw the football. It was thrown completely behind him. And Donnell Daniel takes the ball, starts up to his right, saw the open area on the left-hand side, and got some help going downfield. Got it all the way down to the seven-yard line before the Renegades finally dropped him. But it was just plain a bad throw by Collier, the quarterback. When he's good, he's good. And when he's bad, he's not so good. When he's bad, he's off. <laughs> First and goal for the Generals at the eighth on a 58-yard interception returned by Donnell Daniel. That's two of them tonight. Clarence Collins flank to the right. Generals in the eye formation. Hand off to Herschel running right. Cutting at the five. Herschel is inside the five to the three-yard line. A pickup of five yards for Walker. Freeman and Jackson combine on the tackle. Again, Sam Fowler is on the corner with Maurice Carthon blocking, and that turns out to be the off-tackle play. That's just a slant off-tackle, and Herschel got a great block in his tight end and fullback, and he's looking down at second and three. Sam Bowers is bigger than most offensive linemen. He's 257 pounds and doing a real fine job out there tonight blocking from that tight end position. All right, here are the generals now. Second and goal at the three, again in the I formation. Hand off to Herschel. This time he's running left, cutting right, and he's brought down at the line of scrimmage. Atkins and Freeman, the two linebackers, make the tackle. And they're blitzing the linebackers. They're gambling down here. They came with 10 men. George, the cornerback, was out here on the wide receiver. Collins, everybody else was up and blitzing. 
may have to see a little play-action pass in here. Look for your tight end in the end zone. They're going to do that, Bob, until the generals can hurt them on that blitz. When the renegades are blitzing, the generals would go into a play-action pass or have some sort of bootleg maneuver. They're going to blitz Herschel Walker and try and stop him tonight. Generals now third and goal at the four-yard line, marching from left to right, lining up in the I formation. Flutie, he's going to roll it. Looking to turn the corner at the 10. He spins at the 10. Throws in the end zone. Touchdown to Sam Bowers. Oh, baby. Oh, oh baby. That's, that's what Donald Trump hired him for. Tom Flutie <laughs> looked like he was going to boot leg to the left. He was stopped at his own 10-yard line. Made a complete 180. Threw the ball in the air. And it was Sam Bowers who went high into the air for the touchdown. Play by Doug Flutie. How would you like to be the defensive coordinator <laughs> trying to defend that one, huh? How would you like to be the play by play announcer trying to describe it? Nine to nothing, and now here's Ruzek for the extra point try with Partridge the holder, the snap, the place, the kick is good. And the generals lead 10 to nothing with 10 minutes and 42 seconds to go in the first half. We're at Giants Stadium in the Meadowlands, and we'll be back. Now's the time to change your motor oil to protect your engine. And Texaco's Havlin offers a way to protect your budget, too, with a $3 rebate. Just buy a dozen quarts of Texaco's Havlin motor oil, and you'll get a coupon good for $3, or buy only five quarts, and get a coupon good for a $1.25 rebate. Protect your engine and budget with this special offer from Texaco's Havlin motor oil, now at participating Texaco retailers and local stores. But hurry, the offer ends May 2nd. Want to be in command of the road for as long as you own your car? If so, see your local AC Delco dealer for a new set of Delco Performer shock absorbers. Delco Performers are gas cushioned to provide responsive handling by virtually eliminating shock lag under normal and high-performance driving conditions. And Delco Performers come with a limited lifetime warranty. That's why AC Delco says they're the only shocks your car will ever need. Ask for details, and for a lifetime of smooth rides, get a set of gas cushioned Delco Performer shocks. AC Delco, the smart parts. Available at Eamon Motor Car Company, 786 St. George Avenue in Rahway. It's not bad, David. Very good. You sound like you'll live. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the okay. old throat, huh? Well, how about uh, Doug Flutie? I am telling you. That's two of them. That's two of them tonight. We saw him get the first down here running with the football, and that particular play there, just an outstanding effort by He's a He's a radio play-by-play -play guy's nightmare, trying to describe the pirouettes that he pulls off game in and game out. Well, he did it again, and Bowers came down with a touchdown pass. Ergo, the Generals 10, and the Renegades nothing as Ruzek makes his way toward the football. It's a high end over end kick that Jerry Parrish will field at his own five-yard line, far side of the field. Parrish to the 10, and he will not even make the 20-yard line. He is muscled down at the 17, and in on the tackle was Jim Dumont for New Jersey. Dumont, the reserve linebacker from Rutgers. You know, we talk about, they throw different words out in sports, and one thing in football Ball, and Dave knows it well as the word intensity and there is an intensity about this general football team especially on their specialty teams that really is exciting they come down they're covering they're hitting they're looking to get tackles they're looking to make gang tackles and it sort of filters through the whole football team when your specialty teams hit like that and play up everybody else combines it falls in line it always does Bob and you can tell it especially on the special team the way they start the football game and the way they continue to cover those punts and kickoffs kickoff returns and punt returns that's the mark of an intense football team Walt Michaels certainly has this football team the generals here tonight ready to go 10 days off they needed the 10 days mid-season break, but to get them back the way they're performing now, it's a mark of a good coach. We've always said that, and I've watched a lot of football teams where they'll come back after a, a win like they had against Memphis, and then all of a sudden a 10-day layoff, come back, be a little bit flat. In this case right here, they are superior to the Orlando Renegades on paper, and they're certainly superior in their team play tonight. The generals over the last month really immediately following the loss in Arizona have played as fine a football as this organization has ever played, and that includes their 14-4 and four season of a year ago. The Generals have really come into their own, into a fine football organization. Joey Walters flanked to the left, and Jackie Flowers to the right for Orlando, first and 10 at their own 17. Collier rolling, throwing on the run, and he completes it to Henry Odom, who is wrestled down at the 25-yard line by Jerry Holmes, 
a pickup of eight on the play. It'll be second down and two yards to go. You watch Jerry Holmes make the tackle. It's a lot different when he makes the tackle and he hits him with his shoulder. And if you had a John Preston out there one-on-one, -on -one, he would have ripped his head right through the ball, up through, and tried to force the fumble. Jerry Holmes is an outstanding coverage man. He's not really a vicious tackler like a Johnny Preston is, but he certainly does a fine job covering the receivers. They called it a gain of nine, so let's say it's second and one at the 26-yard line. Single setback is Curtis Bledsoe. Two tight ends employed in this play. And it looks like the Generals may have, in fact, jumped the gun. It looked like Emmanuel Weaver. Big Emmanuel from his nose tackle position. Now, you know he can move a little bit, but he's got to be back across the line when the ball is snapped. But that time, he bumped helmets with the offensive center, so they're going to call it against the Generals. Hold on, hold on. Unless, Wait a minute. Unless he was drawn offside, Charlie. I saw him hit it. <laughs> That's what it is, believe it or not. They're going to call it on the center who sort of leaned back. Uh -huh. Mark Fisher, second-year man from Notre Dame. Jerry wow, Faust didn't okay. teach him that, did he? Okay. So Reggie's out there arguing. Now we're going to have a little talking about it. But, Reggie, you're going to lose. Mark Fisher is none too pleased by the call. He is being restrained. So it is second down and six. Well, at when, the 21-yard line. When you're 2-7, and seven, your frustration to set in, don't you, Charlie? However, Orlando has played better of late. They've won two of their last three, having knocked off Memphis and Arizona. Bledsoe and Odom are in the backfield now, and they are split. Walters flanked to the left, and Jackie Flowers to the right. Second and six, Orlando at their own 21-yard line. <laughs> and now Joey Walters jumped the gun on Jerry Holmes. And there's a reason for that. Jerry Holmes not only gets up and plays in your face, but he does a lot of talking to you along the way. And I'm sure he was talking that time, and he fell for it. Now, they're not talking about Reagan's trip to Europe. What are they talking about? They were talking about the negotiations in yeah. Teaneck, I'm sure. That was part of it. <laughs> anyway, the big thing for the generals tonight, and we know it, and we talked about it early, and that is they've got to keep the pressure on themselves. There's no way Orlando can beat them if they keep the pressure on themselves. And the only way they can do that is everybody plays the game. Defense, offense, special teams. So now from second and one, it's second and 11 for Orlando, all the way back to their own 16-yard line. Bledsoe, the single setback, a wing to the right, flankers to the left and to the right. Collier back to throw, and the ball is tipped into the air by Freddie Please. Gilbert and nearly picked off by Jerry Holmes. That's Instead, it. it'll be third and 11 at the 16. That's the closest that anybody on a defensive line has gotten to Reggie Collier, the quarterback, and it was the big old Freddie Gilbert coming into his own. You know, you say this about this football team, Charlie. There's a lot of guys that are progressing as this season goes on, and they're a good football team now, but if they keep that progression going, at certain positions, they're going to be a much better football team by the year's end. Third down and 11 for the Renegades at their own 16-yard line. Four wide receivers, Jackie Flowers, Jerry Parrish, Joey Walters, and Jeff Smith. And here's Collier on a little pitch out to Curtis Bledsoe. And Bledsoe is run out of bounds at the 21-yard line, a pickup of five. It'll be fourth down and six to go. It was Armstrong who came up from his free safety position to run Bledsoe out of bounds. And so now, for the second time tonight, Greg Cater trots onto the field to punt it away. He is the second-leading putter in the USFL, averaging 42 and a half yards per punt. He got off a 45-yarder in his first try in the first quarter. Standing back at his own 36-yard line, anticipating the punt from Cater, is Danny Knight. You may remember Greg Cater with the Buffalo Bills. Good snap from center, and Cater with a high but short punt that Knight will fair catch at his own 34-yard line. Generals went with excellent field position with 9.52 to go in the first half. First and 10 at their own 34-yard line. Generals 10 and Orlando no score. We're at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands and we'll be back on the New Jersey Generals Football Network.
see for yourself. Trump Plaza. It's Atlantic City's centerpiece. Yeah. WMCA, New York. Generals first and 10 at their own 34. Flutie back to throw. He throws for Walker over the middle and completes it to the 43-yard line where Ron Freeman, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. Generals fall short of the first down by a couple of yards. Second down and two to go. What they did that time was they just decided on first down to get away from that rushing linebackers and linemen against the run, and they just dropped back and dumped the ball off the Herschel out of the backfield. So the Generals now second and two, lining up in the eye from their own 42-yard line. Flutie calling signals, flankers to the left and to the right, hand off to Herschel running right, turning the corner at the 40. He is run out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That's good for the first down for Walker. Victor Jackson ran Walker out of bounds, simply not giving Herschel any angle. Absolutely wasn't giving Herschel any angle. I guess he can stop as fast as he can run because he was coming full speed towards the bench and just put his brakes on him, but he got the first down. A big play by Herschel, but going back to what Bob said before, having that pass on the first down was a change in the, in the general's uh, direction of, of their strategy. Walker now, 10 carries, 74 yards. Generals first and 10 from their own 45-yard line. Walker on a wing to the left. Flutie back to throw. Throwing over the middle for Sam Bowers. It's complete. And Bowers is brought down at the 25-yard line of Orlando by Jeff George. And Sam Bowers is having quite a night. Sam Bowers is having an outstanding night at the, uh, at the running position when he's blocking from the tight end spot as well as catching the football. He caught that touchdown, that miraculous fluted touchdown that we saw up here going into the same direction. But on this particular play, he found the open area, the zone pass, zone coverage, and Flutie had a nice touch getting the football to him, and Sam brought it down for the big game. Jeff Speck gives uh, Bauer as a breather. Generals first and 10 at the Orlando 25, lining up in the I formation. Flutie hands to Hirsch. Off right tackle, Herschel picks up a couple down to the 23. It'll be second down and eight. Ron Freeman, who is the leading tackler, went to a place called Pittsburgh State, and he made the tackle. That's in Kansas, Charlie. <laughs> Not too far from Bradley. You know, hey, whoa, whoa, hold on a minute here. <laughs> hey, you know what? We were watching last year, watching Jeff Speck come on, and in the start of this year, Jeff Speck come on as being sort of like the alternate tight end. But we really see the difference now. With Jeff Speck, he's definitely the number two tight end. Sam Bowers has come a long way since last year and certainly throughout this year. We are uh, pleased to announce the arrival of the wretched wave once again here at Giants Stadium. Second and nine for the Generals at the 24 of Orlando. Flutie back to throw. Flutie being rushed. Flutie being sacked at the 34-yard line. A loss of 10 as Scott Hutchinson, the right end, records his third sack of the season. That's the second time that Doug Mackey, number 73, the left offensive tackle, has got in a situation with Scott Hutchinson. Hutchinson, number 66, questions the patcher very well. He's pretty quick. And when Doug Mackey's got to get fundamentally sound if he's going to protect Doug Flutie's backside the rest of this night because obviously Hutchinson see, thing seems to have found a weakness in Doug Mackey's blocking style. Generals now in the shotgun on third and 18 back at the Orlando 33-yard line. Flutie back to throw. Flutie with time. Throwing long in the end zone for Brown incomplete. But there is a flag on the play back at the 50-yard line. And you know, I would suspect that Doug Mackey did a fair share of holding. Yeah, you know it's a... Uh, and there, here comes the official's call, but you know what that was, Charlie. Here Same situation I talked about, where this, here we go. Okay, they didn't call it, they didn't, they didn't announce it over the loudspeaker, but it was Doug Mackey got caught for holding that same Scott Hutchison, number 66. Like I said before, he's got Doug Mackey figured out, and Mackey's got to get fundamentally sound if he's going to block and protect, because he's very important. Left offensive tackle protects the backside of a right-handed quarterback, which Doug Flutie is. Well, here's Roger Ruzek, who's about to attempt a 50-yard field goal, something he has not tried from this distance all year. He's four of six, making five of seven on the season. Parcher's the holder, hash mark to the right, Mitchell the snapper, the place, the kick is on its way. It is up, it is short. It was about a yard short, but it was right on target. Still, the Generals hold a 10 to nothing lead with six minutes and 23 seconds to go in the first half at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands. We'll be back.
happy birthday, Thunderbird. That's right, it's T-Bird's birthday, but you get to open the presents. Right now, during your Ford dealer's Thunderbird birthday party, you can save hundreds on every new Ford car or truck in stock. Open a special Thunderbird package and get $704 off on a specially equipped Thunderbird, including air conditioning, AM FM stereo, power windows, power locks, tilt steering wheel, and more. Savings based on manufacturer's suggested retail price of option package as compared to pricing of options purchased separately. So see your Ford dealer today for Thunderbird birthday savings on every new Ford. But hurry, because come May 1st, the party's over. Steiner, along with Dave Herman and Bob Cassiola from Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands. Six minutes and 23 seconds ago, first half, a half that's been thoroughly enjoyed by the Generals. They lead 10 to nothing. Herschel Walker already on the evening has uh, 11 carries for 75 yards. Just another day at the office. Just another day at the office. But even though they're ahead 10 to nothing, they haven't been as consistent tonight playing against these Orlando Renegades as they were last week against Memphis. They've had ups and downs, but fortunately they're ahead 10 to nothing. Renegades first and 10 for their own 33, lining up in the I formation. Hand off to Odom, the up back, and Odom to the 34-yard line where he is met head-on by Emmanuel Weaver. A pickup of one on the play. It'll be second down and nine to go. Great job, Emmanuel Weaver. He's really working over the center. Mark Fisher and doing a nice job of controlling that middle area. And what the Renegades are trying to do is on the early down, maybe just get three, four yards, come up third and short, and then go to the control passing game. They've stayed with that most of the evening thus far. With Tom Woodland recuperating from knee surgery, Emmanuel Weaver has taken over the starting job at that nose position. On second and nine at the 35, hand off to Curtis Bledsoe straight ahead. He has got some yardage, and he's got a first down all the way out to the 44-yard line of Orlando where Maurice Clemens and Jerry Holmes made the tackle. Let's take a 10-second timeout now for station identification on the New Jersey Generals Radio Network. 57. First and ten for Orlando, marching from right to left, and this is the second quarter. They trail ten to nothing at their own 44-yard line. Bledsoe the single setback, and off to Bledsoe straight ahead, and he gets maybe a couple of yards to the 46. Second down and eight, and once again, Emmanuel Weaver, along with Bobby Leopold, in on the tackle. You mentioned Emmanuel Weaver taking over from Tom Woodens when he got hurt. And you know, people that play like that tend to make these injuries get well very fast. <laughs> He's uh, doing an outstanding Tom's job. Tom's knee is feeling much better along about that. <laughs> He's doing a good job out there. Emmanuel Weaver, and he's guessing a lot, but he's so big and strong compared to the offensive center. The center only weighs 248 pounds, Mark Fisher, and Emmanuel Weaver is much bigger than that, and he's very active also. So when he's on his game like he is tonight, he's very effective. Weaver is 6'4 and 280 in South Carolina. Second and eight at the 46. Orlando backfield is split. Collier back to throw. Collier with time, throwing, completing it to Ditlick, the tight end, who is caught by Jerry Holmes at the general 47-yard line, about a yard short of the first down. Again, they come to the tight end on the short, quick turnout pattern from his tight end position. Tough to ca uh, cover that because the strong safety has to give him a little room as he comes off the line of scrimmage, and he just breaks away from it. It's going to be third and short. We would anticipate them running up inside here to try and get their first down. About the best thing you can do in that situation, Bob, is make sure the guy receiving the football not pays the price, but gets a little bump here and there. And in other words, hit him as hard as you can and make him understand that every time he catches the ball, it's going to be the same situation. Get their attention. Get their attention. Third and two at the 47-yard line. And off to Odom straight ahead. He hey, didn't I get think it. he's not going to make it. He didn't get it. One of the glaring deficiencies of this Orlando team is they don't have a running back much over 200 pounds. They've got uh, Clad is 206, Odom 205, Bledsoe is 210, if that. Yep. And so now they will have a measurement. The line of scrimmage is the general 46-yard line. It depends really on where they mark the ball. It's going to be very close. <laughs> Isn't that always the truth? Right foot, left foot. Right foot, left foot. And it was the left foot because yeah. they're about six inches short of the first down. Well, in this situation here, Bob, what do you do? I well, say of course, he's going to go for it. Go for it. He's, he's, sure. he's won two games this two year. Two games, why not? Trailing 10 nothing. he's going to go for it. Hey, he's sure. won two. He's on a roll. He's on a roll. Well, I'm sure he's thinking right now. He, uh, 10 well. nothing in the second quarter. He's staying close enough that he's still in his ball game. So, I'll tell you uh, one thing. And the field position's not all that bad no, here, no. even if they don't make it. And I'll tell you one thing. You look at the talent on his side of the field versus the talent on the other side of the field, you can't really judge his coaching abilities 
by what the one and loss record is. And part of it is certainly, but he just doesn't have a lot of good football players on. You got to be, you got to be very ready here for Reggie Collier himself carrying the football. He is quick. He hasn't really run with the ball tonight. This is a perfect situation for him either to get it himself or to come out on some kind of a play action. Well, all he needs about six inches on the play. Fourth and inches at the general 46-yard line. Collier, I don't think he got it. Uh, I don't think he got it. Again, they mark it back farther. Lockett and Weaver in on the tackle. It will all depend. On the mark of the ball. Exactly. <laughs> right foot or left foot. Oh, I don't know. The generals are optimistic, that's for sure. All the generals offensive unit is coming on the field. They needed six inches. It looks like they got a minus six inches. Well, they're going to measure. measure it. He's going to bring it in, and he should. Any, any, any coach should insist on a measurement here. Just don't let him walk off the field. Reggie Collier did not get a good start when the ball was snapped. He almost took a step backwards before he went forward, and that would be a costly situation if he didn't get it. You could probably go back and say, hey, Reggie, next time, forward, baby, and get the first down. He didn't get a good start. His finish was no picnic either. There it is. He didn't get it. Didn't well, the yardage. general's defense is hell. How about that? A game of inches. Who said that? How can you lose yardage on a quarterback sneak? <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't either. Well, the Federals have just found out. We have a break in the action. 3-12 to go. First half. Generals 10. Orlando no score. We're at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, and we'll be back on the New Jersey Generals football network. Now, are you concerned about the cost of heating or cooling your home? Now, if you are, PSENG, Public Service Electric and Gas Company of New Jersey, has a solution for you. PSENG will send an energy specialist to check out your home from basement to attic to look for energy leaks. You'll then receive a computerized report on exactly where your home is losing energy and what you can do about it cost of the service only $15. With the report, you also receive a free energy savings kit so you can begin to stop those energy leaks right now. Call the PSE&G Energy Conservation Center toll-free at 1-800-854-4444 and ask about the home energy survey. And look for more information about the survey in this month's public service mailing. Remember, the number to call is 1-800-854-4444. 1-800-854-4444. Fifty-seven. Generals first and ten to go at their own 46-yard line, leading ten to nothing with three minutes to go first half. Walker and Carthen split in the backfield as Flutie is back to throw. Flutie has time. Throwing long over the middle, and it is nearly intercepted. Flutie overthrew Clarence Collins, and Jeff George and Victor Jackson were both in the neighborhood to pick it off, but it fell incomplete. The key there was, Charlie, that he did overthrow the football because the receiver had the area. He found the open area in the zone. He found it, and the ball was overthrown, and instead of him tipping it down, he tipped it up and almost got it intercepted. So that was not a bad throw by Doug Flutie in the sense that he tried to force it. He just threw it high. Second and 10 for New Jersey at their own 46. 2.51 to go on the half. Lining up in the I formation, Carthen and Walker in the backfield. Flutie calling signals with Collins flanked to the right. Broughton to the left. Flutie rolling right. Stopping. Now running. Now he's going to run it out of bounds. No, he takes a powder at the 49-yard line. He went down on his own, kind of slid into second base, if you will. Kelvin Atkins put on the finishing touch. A pickup of about five on the play. It'll be third down and five that, at the Orlando 49. And that's the versatility of the offense now. Flutie came out. That was a cold, clear sprint out. And he was coming on the corner to throw the football. Got a good block again on the corner by Maurice Carthon, which gave him a chance to get upfield. When he saw his receivers covered, he tucked it in and got himself four yards. The latest on the USFL meetings today, we have an interview with Harry Usher, the commissioner of the USFL, coming at you at halftime. Third and five for the generals of the Orlando 49. From the shotgun, Flutie back to throw. Throwing over the middle, completing it to Walker, and Walker's got the first down at the 41-yard line, and a flag on the play after the play. It looked like a face mask against Orlando. It really did look like a face mask. I think that's what they're going to call it, but heads up to, to the quarterback. Heads up, to, to, heads up play by Doug Flutie, the quarterback, getting the ball to Herschel Walker. And, of course, Herschel being in the league and playing as a receiver as much as he has this year, knew exactly where to go for that first down and got it. And we have a break in the action. The two-minute warning has arrived. Generals with the ball, first and ten at the Orlando 35, leading 10 to nothing. We're at Giants Stadium in the Meadowlands, and we'll come right back. You get a lot when you buy Delco Performer Gas Cushion Shock Absorbers, the only shocks your car will ever need. You get shocks with a leak-proof gas-filled cell that eliminates shock fade, plus something extra. 
you get a big one and a quarter inch piston with more capacity than conventional one inch shocks with something extra. You get a shock for all types of tires with special tuning for radials and something extra. You get a limited lifetime warranty and something extra. You get a 90 day free trial and something extra. The something extra? When you buy four Delco Performers at the regular price, you get a free athletic bag with a list price of $19.95. See your participating Delco retailer today for details of this exciting offer. For the name of your nearest Delco shock retailer, call toll-free 1-800-AC-DELCO and get something extra while supplies last. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Generals lead 10 to nothing. As you're listening to us on the Generals Radio Network over WMCA in New York and WMRE in Boston, Massachusetts. Generals 10 to nothing and uh, Boston's native son, actually Natick's native son, Doug Flutie is having a fairly decent game today. Yes, he is. Six out of 10 for 71 yards and one fantastic touchdown. Oh, I tell you, he did a dipsy doodle. That was, he would have made the Isley brothers proud. He had some moves. <laughs> ten nothing. Generals, two minutes to go. First and ten at the Orlando 35. Out of the I formation. Flutie calling signals. Handing to Herschel, running left. Turning the corner. Walker inside the 30, down to about the 27-yard line. Pick up of eight on the play. Harold Randolph, the left side linebacker, made the tackle for the Renegades. Very good call. They were anticipating with two minutes to pass. The Generals are going to go now without a huddle. They're just going to keep the ball on the ground. Walt Michaels nothing, would like nothing more than to come away with some points here before the half. Nothing like a 17-point halftime cushion. Generals <laughs> currently lead it 10 nothing. Walker and Carson split in the backfield. Flutie back to throw. Flutie has time. Now he's going to run with it. Flutie's going to turn the corner, 30, 25, 20, and he's going to run out of bounds at the 15-yard line. And a first down as Flutie picks up 13 on the play. And he's been doing a lot of straight drop-back passing from the, the, the normal set of the quarterback underneath the center. And when he gets back and those ends just come in a little tight on him, he's so quick he bounces outside. The cover has run off with the, the uh, receivers. And Doug Flutie is magic. Right? You know, one of the things we haven't seen, Bob, is a play-action pass here tonight by the Generals. It would seem like that would be a natural play, natural pass play to call, but we haven't seen it. He's been pretty effective, and when he does see the coverage as strong as it is, takes off and runs and gets some yards. Collins flying to the left, Brown to the right, hand off to Walker, running right. Walker inside the 10, inside the 5-yard line. And he's Walker's just, got the first down. And he ran over Victor Jackson, the free safety. When the free safety's got to come up and make the tackle on your tailback, you've made yardage. How many carries is that for Walker tonight? That is that 12 carries for 93 yards. I'll go back to what I said about Herschel Walker. It's just like another day at the office. We said this, Charlie. When he runs the football and he seems like he gets stronger and stronger, when you're trying to bring him down, it takes his toll. Walt Michael said somebody gets hurt out there when Herschel carries the football, and it's not Herschel. He is really a punishing runner. Generals first and goal at the Orlando four. Lining up in the eye, hand off to guess who? Walker in safe of the ball. It is loose in the end zone, and it is recovered by Orlando's Harold Randolph, the four-year linebacker from East Carolina. That is something we almost never see. That's Walker fumbling the football, but that time it happened. I think that's twice this season, is it not? Yep. Twice this season, and that was a very costly touchdown. Obviously, Walt was trying to get some points on the board. They were the offensive line. Everybody was working on, including Herschel Walker. Something like that is going to happen. When you carry the football as many times as Herschel Walker does, you're going to cough it up. I don't care who you are. You're going to cough it up once in a while. It's just unfortunate that it happened right when it did. 51 seconds to go. First half, generals will probably go into the locker room with a 10 to nothing lead. Somewhat disappointed, but that's got to buoy the spirits of the uh, Orlando Renegades. Oh, I would think it would boy the spirits, if there's any spirits to boy out there. I, I, when it, when it goes, they're, playing, they're playing pretty spirited. They're, they're just out man. There's no question about it. The generals have a better lineup when you look at it on paper. Man for man, team for team, the generals are a better football team. These are the Washington Federals a year ago. They're getting better. Yeah. But by and large, the nucleus of this team was the Federals of a year ago. First and 10, Orlando, their own 20. Collier back to throw. Collier throwing on the run. He completes it to Nizzolik, the tight end. is run out of bounds. At the 27-yard line by Kerry Justin, a pickup of seven on the play. It'll be second down, three to go. 45 seconds remain in the half. Orlando has two timeouts at its disposal. Generals have come with the, naturally with the nickel back. They've got their defensive backs in the game. They're willing to give them that short pass again. Nizalik got out of bounds in time with 45 seconds on the clock. They're a long way from home, and again, Walt Michaels wants to keep him at 10-0 if he can. Lee Corso's calling a timeout. He wants to talk it over. There's a timeout with 45 seconds left in the uh, first half. Generals lead 10 to nothing. 
And Reggie uh, Collier is trotting over to the sideline to uh, discuss uh, with Lee Corso what you, they're going to do with their next 45 seconds. You would think their game plan would be a little tighter than that. They had a, they had the clock stopped by going out of bounds, and to waste the timeout like they did in this situation, bring them down to one timeout left, it just, I guess that is the Washington Federals. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's an <laughs> ideal time to stop your, you know, and regroup, and uh, you have 30 seconds to kill. And, and that, 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 should be, that should be like clockwork. I mean, you got to know when you're in this situation, you got to cover the week of practice, and they've had 10 days of practice. You've got to cover all situations. What are we going to do if we get in this situation? What are we going to do if we get in that situation? You don't want to waste your time out. And Corso and Collier didn't talk to one another for about 10 <laughs> seconds. That was about all. Second and two for Orlando, all the way back at their own 28-yard line. The late arriving crowd at Giant Stadium beginning to fill in now. Seven o'clock start tonight, of course. Here's Collier rolling to his left, throwing sideline and incomplete. It was intended for Jerry Parrish, but he did not have both feet in bounds. He made the catch right in front of Lee Corso, who's now running onto the field, complaining to the official. He's still on the field. I get the hook on Corso. <laughs> That man does a full day's work in a fun football game. When he's up and down that sideline, like, I've never seen a coach like that. Well, Corso was wrong about that. Well, the official was was Ted Colano, and he was standing right on the sideline. He was right in front of the play. you got to give him credit. He was close. That's what he's getting paid for. Well, I tell you, he was close as we took a look at the replay. Uh, it was close. All right. <laughs> it was close. But, but right. still, that doesn't give Corso a license to okay, he's uh, do a halftime show here. <laughs> he's going to call for a replay. Well, we're going to get a TV replay on this. But whether or not it's sufficiently black and white no, for uh, no, no. Cal Laporta no, overruled. No, Charlie, no. I don't think so in this case. No. It was close, all right. Yeah, it was close. We're looking at the replay even now, and... Oh, it is awfully close. <laughs> it's, but it, that's why I won't... Cal Laporta never <laughs> overturns these things. That's why I won't be overturned by Cal Laporta, because it was awfully close. Cal Laporta wouldn't have overturned John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> well, anyhow, we're, gonna, we're waiting for the replay now. Down on the sidelines, the official is hooked up with the ESPN guy down there with the replay. And we'll see exactly what's going to happen up here in the in broadcast booth. But I don't think it's going to be turned over. It was awfully close. It was but, close. <laughs> but, you know, old man Cal. The op- uh, he's just going to love me de- calling him <laughs> old man Cal. But Cal Lepore rarely, if ever, is overturned. And he there says, uh, point blank, it's got to be black and white, yes or no. There are no babies involved. All right. Now we're going to get the meeting on the field. Two officials are getting together. As the wife, all right, good, the kids, okay. <laughs> Sitting in college next year, everything's what, what do you think Kel's going to do now, guys? Okay, and now the referee is going to go over and talk on the dog. Well, we've got a zebra convention right here at Giant Stadium. Ted Colano is uh, chatting with the referee for tonight's game, Bill Parkinson, who is in turn chatting with Cal Lepore. <laughs> Who is in turn chatting uh, with somebody? Cal said, Cal telling the official down there right now, now that's awful close. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, a complete tails for getting it. Yeah. It's a very, actually, it's a very crucial play here because well, sure you're going to get them in close enough with 39 seconds to go a couple of more times. Well, here comes the call. It's a complete oh, pass. And it's the first one. Turn. Is that the first one, Charlie? No, it's the third one third for, the one. Year. for the year. It is the first one that uh, Lee Corso has finally gotten right. He was 0 for 2. And so there is no timeout assessed against Orlando. Well, now, wait so a minute. He called timeout before that, didn't he? Yeah, well, he's still got one timeout okay, remaining. Okay. But he would have been penalized okay. a timeout if the uh, ruling had been uh, sustained. But because it's been overturned, there is no timeout, and so now, suddenly, it's Orlando first and 10 at the general 45-yard line, and suddenly four wide receivers appear in the Orlando lineup. Walter Smith, Flowers, and Parrish. Out of the shotgun, flag on the play. I think the generals were a bit hasty. Matty Ace. All stars, 63 on the offense. Oh, again we get the offense, and you're up here, Bob, from our position. Now, it looks like it was Matty Ace that went offside, but it's our offensive lineman pulling him offside once again. Tom Dornbrook. Tom Dornbrook, number 63. Dornbrook played at uh, Michigan last year and uh, had uh, several years, four of them to be precise, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So it is first and 15, Orlando, at the midfield stripe. Collier back to throw, throwing long for Joey Walters, and he has got it at the five-yard line, where it'll be first and goal. Joey Walters with an exceptional catch. Catch again in front of Danelle Daniel, Ross Armstrong, and Gregory Johnson. And Ross Armstrong is the rookie, and he made the mistake. He's in center field, and he's got to go find the football. He looked up too late. If he had looked up a little sooner, he could have made the play. A pickup of 44 yards, 
And now, suddenly, first and goal, the line of scrimmage will be the six-yard line with 31 seconds left. And Ooh. that TV uh, uh, replay really turned around the fortunes of the Renegades with less than a half a minute to go in the first half. You know, it really turned around the fortunes of the Renegades, that fumble by Herschel yeah. Walker down in the end zone. They bring it back to the 20-yard line. They get the TV replay, and they got it turned around. They make an outstanding throw by, and without a pass, with a throw by Reggie Collier to put the ball up there, and Joey Walters comes down over the reception. Here now, it's the other way around. Instead of the point should be on the general side of the field, they're coming right back here, and it looks like they're in an opportunity for three points at least, and if not a touchdown. They got the ball moving. From the shouldas, wouldas, and couldas department, the generals, had they scored, would have made it 17 nothing. Now Orlando could make it 10-7. Two 30, tight ends. 31 seconds left in the half. First and goal from the six. Collier back to throw. Collier stops, throws in the end zone, and it's incomplete. He overthrew tight end Don Nichols. Bob Nizelik was also in the area, but it is incomplete. It'll be second down and goal from the six with 25 seconds left in the half. That time they came with two tight ends and a straight eye backfield, looking like it's a, an ideal running formation. He came with a bootleg action. He tried to find his end in the corner of the end zone. He was well covered. Now they come back with their wide receivers, Flowers and Walters in the ball game, coming to one side here. Flowers and Walters both flanked to the right. Odom along with Bledsoe split in the backfield. Second and goal from the six. Collier back to throw. Rolling to his right. Stopping and he is He's out of bounds. running out of bounds. He got the pass off to Jackie Clark as there was only one fly <laughs> in the oyster. And that was it. Reggie Collier was out of bounds when he threw the ball. <laughs> one little mistake out there by Reggie. <laughs> and he was out of bounds. His right foot yeah. came down out of bounds. Oh, man. He ran out of bounds, not five yards in front of Coach Cassio who was very hasty in his retreat, I might add. Well, I got to tell you something. The generals have got to put this thing, and they've got to be more consistent. I said before in, the, in, in, in this half that they are not playing as consistent tonight as far as their offense goes as they did last week against a better football team, and they've got to get this thing turned around here because they can't afford mistakes or letdowns and give the opportunity to the, for the Renegades to get some points. Well, Collier ran out of bounds and lost six on the play, so it's third and goal from the 12. And Collier, once again, is back to throw from the dead center of the field. He throws over the middle, and he completes it to the tight end. Bob Nislik was brought down at the three-yard line. There's no... It took four generals to take him down. And there's no, no, time there's no timeouts left. There's nope. only six seconds. They're not going to get this nope. off. They can't do it, Bob. And this is why the Orlando yep. Renegades are the former Washington yep. Federal. Time ran out of A great job by that defense, though, keeping the ball in front of him and not permitting Nislik to get in the end zone. And we have come to the end of the first half. Generals lead by the hair of their chinny chin chin 10 to nothing. We're at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, and we'll be back on the New Jersey Generals Football Network. Oh, Bentley, what's today's forecast? A shower, sir. Rain again? Well, actually, sir, it's Zenith Shower of Values clearance sale. You can get great savings on Zenith color TVs. Even Zenith superb VHS video recorders are on sale. Oh, fantastic, Bentley. Oh, there's more, sir. Oh. Participating Zenith dealers are also selling exquisite push-button umbrellas for only $3.99 while supplies last. Ah. A tremendous value for your dollar. Mm -hmm. And while there, you can enter the Zenith Shower of Value sweepstakes. The top prize is a Zenith giant screen projection TV. Yeah. One of five excellent Zenith prizes. Mm. No purchase necessary, of course. Oh, splendid. Great savings on Zenith products and a great deal on a push-button umbrella. We <laughs> must hurry, sir. This offer ends May 31st. First. Oh, absolutely. Good job, Bentley. Oh, I know how saving money is such a priority with you, sir. Bentley? Looking out for your prosperity, sir. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Prices, availability, and promotion optional with dealer. Sweepstakes entrance must be 18 years or older. Void where prohibited by law. Drawing date, June 17th, 1985. 57. W -W Welcome back to Giant Stadium here in East Rutherford, New Jersey, with the Generals leading the Orlando Renegades 10 to nothing. The Generals were came awfully close to making it 17 to nothing, and then, of course, Orlando made it awfully close and making it 10 to 7. But when all is said and done, it is in fact a 10 to nothing halftime lead. Herschel Walker, first half, 14 carries, 96 yards, 
Doug Flutie had some really acrobatic moves in the first half, including a brilliant touchdown pass from Flutie to Sam Bowers. And Bowers had to go high into the air to snare that one down. Sam Bowers is playing an outstanding football game out of White Plains, New York, went to Fordham. He's doing a real fine job, not only in the passing game, but in the running game, too, as well as blocking. We've got to take now while Michael's got to get back in there and look and find some way to get some consistency on this football team. The defense, when they shut them out, they've done a real fine job. The quarterback they're playing against tonight is not the best quarterback in the league. He can be dangerous, and to come away with no points for as far as the defense of the generals go, they got to be satisfied. Bob Cassioli, your halftime evaluation. Well, we said earlier, right in the, the beginning of the show, that it's always tough to play them a second time, and it's always tough to beat them a second time. And although Orlando is not a very good football team, they're still playing with a lot of emotion. The generals lead 10 to nothing. They've made some mistakes, but yet they've controlled a good part of this game, and the defense has risen to the occasion when they had to. I think the second half, Walt Michaels will say, let's get the football. It's our turn to take it. Let's go down and get some points and make this thing out of reach for them. Should the generals go on and win this game tonight. Their record would improve to 7-3, and three, and that would place them in a three-way tie for first place in the USFL East, uh, tied along with Tampa Bay and Birmingham. Of course, the big story of the day today was the Pow Wow in Teaneck, New Jersey, and coming up in just a couple of minutes, an interview with the commissioner of the USFL, Harry Usher, who will brief us on exactly what was said and done. It's halftime at Giant Stadium of the Meadowlands. Generals 10, Orlando no score. We'll be back in two minutes with that interview with Harry Usher. Reach for the star, we trust the car. Reach for the star, to the products with the star. Reach for the star, the big bright Texaco star. If your car knocks, it's probably undernourished, so put it on a diet. Texaco's Super Unleaded Diet. It's got higher octane than regular unleaded to help knock out the knocks. Reach for the star, the big bright Texaco star. Want to be in command of the road for as long as you own your car? If so, see your local AC Delco dealer for a new set of Delco Performer shock absorbers. 57. Halftime at Giant Stadium, and joining me in the general's broadcast booth now is the commissioner of the USFL, Harry Usher, who has certainly had a busy day today. Harry, for those who are just tuning in and may not have heard the news, what happened at the celebrated meeting in Teaneck today? Well, the owners uh, agreed by a count of 12 to 2 to reaffirm the decision they took in August of 1984 to go to the the fall of 1986 after the spring season is completed. And uh, that was one of the basic decisions. The other was to put to rest all the speculation about the possibility of L.A. folding during this year. And uh, basically a reaffirmation again of a vote that was taken um, in January that this team and no team would fold during the 1986 year. What is the status currently of the Los Angeles Express franchise in terms of finding an owner? The status of the Birmingham Stallions, they've certainly had problems uh, unrelated necessarily to the league. San Antonio and Houston reportedly also have problems. Well, L.A., uh, we had some buyers that were very interested in it, and uh, about three weeks ago, uh, uh, a whole lot of speculation started occurring. Are we going to be in the spring or fall? I thought that had been put to rest, but then John Bassett made an announcement that he was not going to play in the USFL unless he played in the spring and that he was going to go out and form his own league and that activity has been going on for the past three weeks and it's been very difficult to be able to make sure that everyone who was interested in any franchise uh, knew exactly the facts that were going on. That's the reason I called the meeting to put this to rest. So as far as Los Angeles is concerned now, what is the status of a potential owner? Are you near? Are you far? We're near. We're near. We have a couple uh, real live ones and we're working on it. I hope that we'll be able to consummate something within 30 days. Birmingham, Houston, and San Antonio. Birmingham is a very interesting situation because the city uh, voted to both lend and invest money in the team, provided there was matching money put up. Uh, the league itself has agreed to uh, not collect certain assessments from it until February 1, 1986, and that was another action item taken today. So the Birmingham at this point, I think, is in good shape. Uh, San Antonio is a matter of the cash flow problems that uh, occasion a number of uh, matters that got public recognition, those things have all put, been put to bed. And Houston is exactly the same situation was at the beginning of the year. League is providing a small amount of loan to carry it through the end of the year. It may well also have a new buyer uh, that was mentioned today. But uh, things have stabilized, and uh, with the direction and with the clear uh, input that this would be a fall 86 
team uh, league with the teams that are dedicated to playing in it. I think we made a great statement today that uh, everyone I hope will listen to. Two teams voted against Tampa Bay and Denver is my understanding. What will happen to those two franchises? Well, John uh, Bassett on behalf of the Tampa Bay Band has announced that he would finish the season and then withdraw from the league. Actually, Doug Spedding uh, is looking at the situation. He does have a difficult situation in Denver in the fall uh, because of the Broncos. Uh, so he's got to make a decision. One of his decisions may be to see if John can put together some kind of spring league and uh, go with it. Another decision would be to uh, move his team. Another decision may be simply to withdraw. So he has to make uh, a decision under the facts as he best can determine them. And he hasn't actually done anything expressed a, a negative vote in the sense of the affirmation. Will there be a team in Chicago in the fall of 86? Yes, there will be. That's, uh, there'll be teams in New York or New York metropolitan area, uh, New Jersey, uh, Chicago, and Los Angeles. So those are the key markets, and we're going to be there. Now, as far as uh, television is concerned, that obviously is the bread and butter for any league anymore, professional or amateur. How are you going to get your games across, and more importantly, where are you going to get your money from? Well, our ESPN agreement, which has two more years to run after the conclusion of this year, is applicable whether it was spring or fall, so that that forms a, a base floor of the television revenues. On top of that, from the explorations that I have done, the revenues that are available are rather substantial in the fall in contrast to the spring. And so that was another factor that was discussed. It was an important factor. As you say, the revenues from television are, uh, are a rather key factor. We talked about the impact on attendance. We talked about the uh, stadium availability. We talked about a number of things. And uh, at the conclusion of it, we took a, a not a straw vote, but an indication of interest, and uh, uh, it came out this uh, way as we have been reporting it. So basically what we will see is a syndicated network of sorts uh, in, in the fall of 86 at this point, or what? Well, in the most generic uh, concept of the word syndication, uh, syndication typically means going through a syndicator uh, and having that syndicator put together through conventional methods, ways of distributing the signal. Uh, I think that what we're going to work out is something a lot more interesting, a lot more exciting, and then probably a lot more profitable. Uh, we'll be announcing that in the future, and uh, it's an exciting new concept using some of the technology that's available today. Well, fair enough. Harry Usher, thank you very much for coming up here and spending uh, half time with us here at Giant State. All right. Thank you, Joe. It is halftime at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands with the Generals leading the Orlando Renegades 10 to nothing. We'll be back on the New Jersey Generals Football Network. A quarterback needs protection. Okay, hurry. Come on, guys. Where's my protection out there? I've been down so many times it looks like up. To go the distance, your engine needs protection, too. Texaco Havilland Supreme Motor Oil is specially formulated with nine additives to protect against wear, rust, and corrosion. And a special friction fighter helps save gasoline and improve mileage. On the field, a quarterback needs good protection. Your engine needs tough protection off the field. Protection's the name of the game with Texaco Havilland Supreme. Want to be in command of the road for as long as you own your car? If so, see your local AC Delco dealer for a new set of Delco Performer shock absorbers. Delco performers are gas cushions to provide responsive handling by virtually eliminating shock lag under normal and high-performance driving conditions. And Delco performers come with a limited lifetime warranty. That's why AC Delco says they're the only shocks your car will ever need. Ask for details, and for a lifetime of smooth rides, get a set of gas cushion Delco performer shocks. AC Delco, the smart part. Pardon me. Does bus number 32 stop here? Yes. Oh, it's a lovely umbrella, and this is some shower. Oh, you must mean Zenith Shower of Values clearance sale with great savings on Zenith Color TVs, plus Zenith Super Quality VHS video recorders, all at incredible prices. Actually, I'm very wet. Zenith is also having a Shower of Values sweepstakes, and the top prize is a giant screen projection TV, one of five Super Zenith prizes. Ma'am, I'm soaking. Just visit your nearest participating Zenith dealer and enter to win. There's no purchase necessary. In fact, that's where I bought this spectacular push-button umbrella for only $3.99. It's a tremendous value. Yes, it's a super umbrella. But hurry, this special Zenith offer ends May 31st. Ma'am, yes. may I please share the umbrella with you? Oh, my goodness, yes. Why did you ask me that in the first place? 
Prices, availability, and promotion optional with dealer. Sweepstakes entrance must be 18 years or older. Void where prohibited by law. Drawing date, June 17, 1985. You're listening to New Jersey Generals Football on WMCA New York. Brought to you in part by the Alfa Romeo President's Group. Automobiles built for the fun-loving rich. And you, if you hurry. Are you concerned about the cost of heating or cooling your home? Now, if you are, PSE&G, Public Service Electric and Gas Company of New Jersey, has a solution for you. PSE&G will send an energy specialist to check out your home from basement to attic to look for energy leaks. You'll then receive a computerized report on exactly where your home is losing energy and what you can do about it. Cost of the service, only $15. With the report, you also receive a free energy savings kit so you can begin to stop those energy leaks right now. Call the PSE&G Energy Conservation Center toll-free at 1-800-854-4444 and ask about your home energy survey. And look for more information about the survey in this month's public service mailing. Remember, the number to call is 1-800-854-4444. 57. We are back at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, and with us now, one of the owners of the Houston Gamblers, Dr. Jerry Arkovitz, a familiar name and face here in the general broadcast booth, and Jerry Squire, who has been holding the Birmingham Stallions together with some bubble gum and band-aids over the past couple of weeks. Jerry Squire, let me ask you question number one. What with the uh, outcome of the meeting today, how does that bode for the Birmingham Stallions in Birmingham? What with the search for an owner and so on? I think it gives us a tremendous boost. You know, the league did some things today that really helped our franchise. And, of course, with the city uh, making a million-dollar investment in our franchise, a $100,000 investment, a $900,000 loan, we've just got a lot of debt of gratitude out to a lot of people. And I think we're going to have a very viable franchise and be around for a long time. We look forward to playing up here in the Meadowlands. I think the final game of the season against the Generals. Uh, that is exactly right. And let's not make it too final for that championship game here at the Meadowlands. Have you now an owner that is waiting to purchase the club as a result of today's meeting? What is that status? No, we do not have an owner that is waiting to purchase the club. Our decision has been to go to a broad-based ownership in Birmingham with a lot of community involvement, and we think that's the way to go down there. We're getting the support. We've got the support of the city now, and I think we're going to be real successful. Does the fall present any problems with you uh, down there for the Stallions, what with Auburn and Alabama football? I don't think so. I, I think that Alabama plays three football games in Birmingham. We can have some big sports weekends, but I think it'll complement one another, and we're real pleased with it. What day of the week would ideally be the best week day of the week for you to play down there? Ideally, the best day of the week is to play Saturday night. I'm not sure that we will be able to do that, but that remains to be seen. Jerry Sklarth, thank you very much for coming up to the booth. Thank you. It is a who's who of ownership here in the USFL tonight, and Dr. Jerry Argovitz now. What is your impression of today's meeting, and how does that bode for the gamblers, who it's no secret have had some money problems down there? I thought the uh, vote today was uh, was a tremendous. Uh, I was very in favor, much in favor of fall football. That's where the, traditionally that's where football is played. Uh, that's where the fans want to see it. I think that's where the money's at in TV, and the gamblers' financial problems. We don't we don't have any more. In the next 60 days, we will announce a new ownership, majority owner of our franchise, some people, and the Fortune 100 group. And that will eliminate our franchise for the next 400 years as far as financial problems go. <laughs> the, uh, the, the second half kickoff has just uh, taken place. Jeff Brockhouse kicked it to an up back Sam Bowers who returned it out to the 36-yard line where the generals have it first and 10 to go. Stay with us here just a minute, Jerry, if you would. Have uh, Doug Flutie calling signals out of the I formation. Carthen and Walker are deep. Broughton and Collins flanked to the left. First play, second half, generals will lead 10-0. Hand off to Herschel off right tackle, and Herschel gets nothing, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all second and ten at the 36. Now, as far as hey, the... You never got nothing against no. us. <laughs> <laughs> as far as the gamblers are concerned, going against the Oilers, is that uh, present of a, uh, much of a problem for you oh, in your I, community? I look forward to that. I mean, the, the you know, uh, certainly not going against the Cowboys. Uh, they've been, been in Houston, again, the way the Oilers have been the last several years with the most exciting team in, in professional football, I believe, the Houston Gamblers. Uh, I think we can compete with any team in the National Football League. If I had to be in a city where there's an NFL team, Houston's the place to be. General second and 11 from the 35. Flutie back to throw, being forced to run out of the pocket. Rolling, running, 40, and he runs out of bounds at the 43-yard line. A pickup of eight on the play. It'll be third down and three yards to go. Flutie run out of bounds. Now back to the, uh, the issues at hand. You have John Bassett, who has left the league. Tampa Bay was really one of the stronger franchises in the league. 
What is the impact on the loss of Bassett and the Bandits? Well, I, I have a lot of respect to Amber Race for John. I'm sorry to see him leave, but uh, we need to pair our, to pair our league down to the, to the maximum of 12 teams anyway. I see the Tampa Bay team as an alternative going to Chicago when they start up next year. Got a good nucleus, a good uh, good team, good coach. And, uh, I, you know, I'd see John go, but, uh, that, that, you know, I wish him well. Generals third and three at the 42. Flutie rolling right, looking to get rid of the ball. Rolling, rolling. Puts a juke on, and he's going to be brought down from behind. No, he stepped out of the clutch of the defender, and he's got the first down all the way to the 49-yard line. First and 10, New Jersey. Generals lead it 10 nothing. a minute and a half into the third quarter. Your quarterback's down. Bob, could you see on the sideline, what is he down for? What's up, Flutie? He's fine. Doug Flutie is fine. He stumbled forward, okay. and he just made a great move to get out of bounds and get a first down. All in all, Jerry Argovitz, you're obviously then pleased with the outcome of today's meeting. Absolutely. They're, they're right now at the end of two and a half years. This league has been unprecedented in sports history. There are six teams today, and this league can play in the NFL and compete very well. All right, fair enough. Jerry Argovitz with us here in the booth live. Here's Walker, first and 10 at the 48, turning the corner, flag on the play. Walker run out of bounds at the 35-yard line, a pickup of 15. Now, there are two, there are three flags on the play. Holding against New Jersey is one of the calls. Well, I'll tell you one thing there, Mr. Herman and Mr. Cassiola, everybody came out of this meeting uh, breathing a sigh of relief, and they're beating their breasts saying, hey, everything is just honky-dory. Those who showed up here at the ballgame. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, of course, uh, John Bassett is the one lone guy in that whole organization, the USFL, that decided he is not going to take his team. Now, Jerry made a very interesting point. He said that, I think I heard him say that they, they could take that nucleus of that football team and move it to Chicago. Doesn't John Bassett, if he leaves the league, doesn't he take his football players with him? He would, yeah. I, I, I think what he meant to say was, what the delegate from Houston meant to say was that, in fact, uh, there would be a new franchise in Chicago, so they're killing off the Tampa Bay market and exchanging it for the number two market in the country, which is Chicago. Generals first and ten at their own 38. Flutie back to throw, throwing long over the middle for Waldo Broughton. He's got it in the 30-yard line, and Broughton is down at the 26-yard line of Orlando. First and ten to go. And that's a great move by Waldo Broughton. Coming in from the left side of the formation is the split receiver, breaking over the middle, getting behind Gray, the cornerback to that side, in the middle, no free safety. Doug Flutie waited for him to get open and let him beautifully. Big gain, got out of a hole. The Generals got to get a score now. They've been close too many times tonight. A pickup of 36 yards on the play. Generals first and 10 at the Orlando 26-yard line. In the third quarter, the Generals are marching from right to left. Maurice Carthen on a wing to the left. Here's Walker with a pitch out running left, looking to turn the corner at the 25-yard line, and down he goes at the 25. A pickup of one. It'll be second down and nine. Freeman and Randolph, a couple of linebackers, combined to make the tackle. On that last play, though, Bob, the one that Doug Flutie threw so very well, the pass blocking up front was excellent on that particular situation, and it looks like the left offensive tackle, Doug Mackey, is now doing a much better job blocking against the... The, the, the defensive end, number 66, Scott Hutchinson. Hutchinson has been shut out in the last several attempts trying to get to Flutie, the quarterback, when he's throwing the football. That was Walker's 200th carry of the season. General second and eight at the 24-yard line. Out of the eye. Bootleg. Here's Flutie running right, turning the corner, 25, 20, 15, 10. Cutting back, and he's down at the three-yard line. It's been Doug Flutie night tonight, along with Herschel Walker. It really has, and Doug Flutie, of course, taking that football on that rollout. It wasn't a bootleg, it was a rollout. Running behind, he didn't see anybody open, and he saw the figure in the run in, and you can hear the crowd yelling, Flutie, they're not booing, are they? That's right, no, sir. Flutie, Flutie. A good job by Doug Flutie, an outstanding athlete. i got to tell you something. He's come into his own. It doesn't look like it's makeshift out there the way it did before. It looks like there's more design to it. I don't know how you can design your quarterback running and cutting back over the middle, but obviously he found the open area and got down there almost into the end zone. John Jewell has checked into the lineup, and I think he is a tackle eligible. We'll have to wait and see. General's first and goal from the two. Hand off to Walker straight ahead. Touchdown. For Walker, his 11th touchdown of the season, and the Generals lead 16 to nothing with the extra point try coming up. Well, we thought they would go in there looking to come back out, using that offense as Bob suggested, and getting some points, and they really put it together on that particular series. Doug Flutie, of course, being the hero, if you will, along with along with Herschel Walker, but Doug Flutie threw the long ball and ran in pretty close to the touchdown, and then it was Walker getting the points. Ruzek, 30 of 32 in the extra point department. We'll try and tack on point 17, which he has successfully accomplished. 
a break in the action. 10 minutes, 16 seconds ago, third quarter. Generals pitching a shutout. 17 nothing over the Renegades. We're at Giants Stadium in the Meadowlands, and we'll be back on the New Jersey Generals Football Network. Hey, Cab. Bob Hope. Hi. You better put on these earmuffs to drown out the engine knocks. Hey, you don't need earmuffs. You need star power. Texaco Star Power, the higher octane in Texaco Super Unleaded that can help knock out the knocks. Hey, Cab. Hello again, Mr. Hope. You know, the engine's so quiet now, I can tell you some of my jokes. You still have those earmuffs? Want to be in command of the road for as long as you own your car? If so, see your local AC Delco dealer for a new set of Delco Performer shock absorbers. Delco performers are gas cushioned to provide responsive handling by virtually eliminating shock lag under normal and high-performance driving conditions. And Delco performers come with a limited lifetime warranty. That's why AC Delco says they're the only shocks your car will ever need. Ask for details, and for a lifetime of smooth rides, get a set of gas cushioned Delco performer shocks. AC Delco, the smart parts. Available at CMT 1104 Princeton Avenue in Trent. 57, WPC, New York, New York. Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, General 17-0. Ruzek's kickoff field by Jerry Parrish. He drops the ball at the five-yard line. Now he picks it up, running for dear life. He's going to be tackled and speared at the seven-yard line. John Jewell was in on the tackle along once again with Jim Dumont. And it goes bad. It really goes bad for the for the Orlando Renegades. I gotta tell you, dropping that football, and then he had nowhere else to run. And you look at that coverage coming down. The Generals really come out here in the second half, knowing what they had to do, and they were bound and determined they were going to get it done. They've been played a real outstanding series on offense. The special teams came down and covered the kick very well. And now we'll see how the defense performs. Bledsoe and Odom in the Orlando backfield. Generals scoring play seven. Plays 67 yards in 4 minutes, 44 seconds. Walker, a two-yard touchdown run. Here's Collier back to throw. Throwing sideline well short of the intended receiver, Joey Walters. Coming out first down and throwing the football. You think when they're down 17-0, one of the things Reggie Collier would revert to is Reggie Collier doing the job, carrying the football himself. We may see some of this if the frustration grows as far as the passing game. He may have to decide to run it himself. And it's going to be very important for the general's defense, which has done the job thus far tonight, to contain Reggie Collier. The Generals won the first meeting of this year in Orlando from the Renegades, 28-10. Now it's the General 17-0, 9.43 to go third quarter. Collier with four wideouts, back to throw. Collier throwing over the middle for Joey Walters. He completes it to the 15-yard line, but Walters paid for his indiscretion as Donnell Daniel and Ross Armstrong made the tackle for New Jersey and hit him hard. And that's what Dave mentioned before. They're catching the football in front of those people, whether it be the tight end or the wide receiver, but they're paying for the catch, and sooner or later, they may start to look for those defenders and take their eye off the ball. So it is third down and two yards to go for the Orlando Renegades. The ball at their own 16-yard line. Marching from left to right are the Renegades in their white and blue trimmed uniform. General 17 now, nine minutes to go, third quarter. Third and two. Call your hands to Bledsoe, straight ahead. He is going to be short of the first down, I do believe. He's Bob Cassiola near the line of scrimmage. What does it look like? He's short by almost a yard. All right, so it looks like it'll be fourth down. In fact, Greg Cater has trotted onto the field with his 43 yards for punt average. Tonight he's pretty much been on cue with two punts, one of 45 yards and the other of 42. And let's say something about Kyle Borland who stepped in two games ago for John Joyce. Kyle Borland is playing an excellent job of linebacker inside, making a big hit just as the, as the running back tried to make Bledsoe, tried to get for that first down. It was uh, it was uh, Kyle Borland who made the hit that stopped him. And one of the things that's been very impressive, and again on that particular situation, was your big nose tackle out there, Emmanuel Weaver. Instead of running around the block, Bob, and you know what I'm talking about, he yeah. fights through the block and keeps those guys off those linebackers, keeps that offensive guard off the linebackers, and lets the Kyle Borland make the play he just made. He's a very tough guy against the run. He's a great run defensive down line. Tom Woodland's knee is feeling better and better, I'm sure. On fourth and one for the 17, Cater with a high but relatively short punt fielded by Danny Knight, and he is going to be smeared at his own 43-yard line. But the Generals will have excellent field position 
with eight minutes and 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. It was Lupe Sanchez who made the tackle on the play. So the Generals first and 10 for their own 43. 8.15 to go third quarter, New Jersey 17, Orlando nothing at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, and we'll be right back. Want to be in command of the road for as long as you own your car? If so, see your local AC Delco dealer for a new set of Delco Performer shock absorbers. Delco Performers are gas cushioned to provide responsive handling by virtually eliminating shock lag under normal and high-performance driving conditions. And Delco Performers come with a limited lifetime warranty. That's why AC Delco says they're the only shocks your car will ever need. Ask for details, and for a lifetime of smooth rides, get a set of gas cushioned Delco Performer shocks. AC Delco, the smart part. Available in Brogan Cadillac Olds, Route 46 East in Totowa. We are back at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands. It was a 37-yard punt for Frank Painter, and the Generals have excellent field position. First and 10 at their own 44-yard line, and this is the third quarter, with 8 minutes and 10 seconds to go on the clock running. The Generals are marching from right to left. With Walter Brout flanked out to the right side. He's the only wide receiver. And Herschel Walker on a wing to the left, leaving Carthen the single setback. Generals at their own 44. Flutie calling six. Flutie hands to Carthen straight ahead. Carthen pulls over the 50 to the 46-yard line of the Orlando Renegades. And that's very close to a first down where Victor Jackson had the unenvious yeah. task of taking the ball, Mr. Carthen. Boy, did he take Mr. Carthen on. And I've got to tell you something. On that battle, he lost. Victor Jackson lost. Carthen just ran right over the top of him. You give that guy credit. Give Jackson credit for having the proper technique and proper <laughs> position. But, man, he needs more size when he's going to take that big ball back on. Marcus Anderson now checks into the lineup. He is flanked to the right. And Danny Knight, a flanker to the left. Carthen and Walker split in the backfield. Now they move into the I formation. Generals first and 10 at the Orlando 46. And up to Herschel running right. Herschel turning the corner. Herschel still on his feet. Herschel to the 30, 25, 20. And he is knocked out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Wow, did you see that bust of speed that breaking away at the Herschel Walker? As soon as he got about two yards past the line of scrimmage, he takes off like the world class spinner he is. And man, he really hustled on that. That is something, I gotta tell you. That time the defensive backs, Gray and George, came up to make the play, and all they got was shoulders. And that's what they're running into. Herschel Walker's so, got such great body lean when he runs. And when he gets going and he levels you, you're gonna tackle shoulders. And he ends up putting you back another four or five yards. Marcus Anderson now flanked to the right. Walker on a wing to the left. Carson the single setback. Generals first and 10 at the Orlando 13-yard line. And up to Carson. Looking to turn the corner left side. He does. He is going to be brought down, however, at about the 7-yard line. A pickup of 6 on the play. Second and 4. Fred McAllister, the middle linebacker. Kelvin Atkins, the outside linebacker, makes the tackle for Orlando. Perfect in the situation for Walt Michaels offensively. He's alternating now. He's giving Carth on the ball. He puts Herschel Walker on the flank, gives him a, a rest. Then he brings Herschel back as a single back. Right. Carth on a, he's getting balance in his offense. And really, uh, the offense is working to perfection. Generals, they call it second and five at the eight-yard line. Carthen again, the single setback. Walker a wing to the left. Marcus Anderson flanked to the right. Generals lead 17 to nothing. 6.20 to go, third quarter. Flutie heading to Carthen. Carthen inside the five. Carthen down to about the three-yard line. And there's no question about it. It's Walt Michaels is sitting on a 17-point lead. He's driving almost into the end zone now, inside the five-yard line. And as you mentioned, Bob, he's going to take an all that ball back and forth between Carson, Carthon, number 33, and Walker, number 34. There's no sense. You got the ball game under control at this point. There's no sense in getting the ball to Herschel all the time. It's still eight more games after this one exactly. to, to play. And he's already got, Herschel's already got 18 carries for 130 yards. You're not trying to set any record here tonight. You're trying to win the ball game and continue as the head coach, not the players, but as the head coach looking down the road what's up ahead of us. And the generals on the play record the first down. Carthens did. So it'll be first and goal from the four. Mo Carthon tonight, five carries, 24 yards. I want to tell you, there's a very fine job being done on the left side of the line tonight, especially by Vince Stroke. He's having an excellent night. He's blocking that old veteran when he's in there, Joe Ehrman, who's up down on the, on the run defense. And Stroke is getting the better of it. Ehrman played for George <laughs> Allen. Many times. I would hate to Chicago, think. Chicago, Arizona, and Washington. Herman played when I played. You can figure that one out. Oh, he must be pushing 60 by now. <laughs> Pitch out to Walker running right. Walker can't turn the corner. He's brought down at the three-yard line. A pickup of one 
Bernard West grabbed uh, the only available part of uh, Walker's anatomy, his ankles, and brought him down. And that's where you got to tackle him, and West made a big play. West is not the biggest of linebackers. He came in behind his blockers and waited for that hole to open up, and he caught Herschel right around the ankles and brought him down for no gain. I can't believe Joe Ehrman played against Dave Herman. Well, believe it, because he did. He had another tackle playing down there with the Baltimore Colts. His name was Mike something. Very quick, very quick guy. But Joe Ehrman played the same man as he played now, anchoring the line on the against the run. Second and goal at the four-yard line. Speck in motion to the near side. Hand off to Carthen, who pulls his way in for the touchdown. Maurice Carthen, his fourth touchdown of the season. And the Generals now lead 23 to nothing. Exactly where you called it, Bob. You said that Vince Strauss was having a good game, number 66, the left offensive guard, playing against the Joe Herman, whoever comes in there. And they ran it right over the top of Big Vince. He pushed him into the end zone. And, of course, Maurice Carthen carried it up over the top and got the six points. And now Roger Ruzek, who's going to ask for overtime pay. He's been busy tonight for the extra point try. Partridge the holder. Russ Mitchell is the long snapper. The snap, the place, the kick is perfect. And the Generals lead 24 to nothing with four minutes and 52 seconds to go in the third quarter from Giant Steam in the Meadowlands, where we'll return on the New Jersey Generals Football Network. Hey, fans, if you haven't been out to see Doug Flutie, the record-breaking Herschel Walker, and the rest of the playoff-hungry generals, now here's what's coming up next. Sunday, May 12th is Mother's Day at 2.30 p.m., Star Wars, USFL style, with the 84 champion Baltimore Stars invading Giants Stadium with Chuck Fusina and Kelvin Bryant. Don't forget to bring Mom. Saturday night, June 1st, 7 o'clock, the generals host the Memphis Showboats and the USFL's number one passer, Walter Lewis. Now, also, two lucky couples will re win round-trip airfare compliments of Pan Am by coming in their best European costume from France, England, Germany, or Italy. Yep. Gates open at 5.30. Concession stands open early, too. The stadium club opens for members at 4.30. So come on out, enjoy dinner or a snack, and see some great action. June 1st, Saturday night at 7, Generals in Memphis. Advanced sales and Ticketron outlets are at the Meadowlands Arena box office Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, Sundays from noon to 5, or call 935-3900. They have game tickets on sale at Giant Stadium ticket windows three hours before game time. Come on in. The Generals want you. 57. Generals 24. Orlando no score. Four minutes, 52 seconds to go, third quarter. Roger Ruzek with the ball teed up at the 35-yard line to our white, our right. Jerry Parrish standing back at his five-yard line to our left, awaiting the kickoff. It has been all New Jersey. And in the third quarter, where the Generals, this season at any rate, have been historically horrid, they have uh, scored 14 unanswered points against Orlando. That's right. This is the third quarter, isn't it? And this has been their first quarter, right? Not Good. tonight. Good job. Ruzek with the kickoff high end, oh, end over end. And Parrish feels it at the five-yard line, looking to turn the corner at the 10, and he can't. He is tossed out of bounds. Ruthlessly, I might add. And Bill Parkinson, the referee, happens to agree. And that will be a 15-yard penalty for unnecessary roughness. And they're going to call it... Danell Daniels. Danell Daniels. I got to tell you, that was a questionable call, but the referee and the officials here want to keep the game underhand, so they're going to call this particular play against the generals. Unnecessary roughness. Drawing the ball carry out of bounds. Gives them a little better field position, I might add. A lot better field position. Now they got the ball in the 27-yard line instead of the fifth. Well, what would that be? 15 yards from there? It'd be about yep. the 12-yard line. Mm -hmm. Math major at Michigan yes, State. I was. Huh? I was pretty good at that, too. Why you're the big executive that you are these days. Clock running four and a half to go third quarter. It's Collier back to throw. He's rolling now and he's throwing and he completes it to Nizelik out to the 45-yard line of New Jersey who flat out beat Bobby Leopold on the play. That's just a tight end breaking to the sideline. It's a very tough pattern on a first down play because the strong safety Daniels got to cover him. He gave a little room and he broke it out behind him and he got the pass off. The generals will give him that. They'll keep the play in front of him. What they don't want to do now leading 24 to nothing is to give him the long, quick touchdown. Generals last scoring drive, six play, 56 yards. All rushing on that, uh, I might add. First and 10 for Orlando at their own 45-yard line, trailing by 24 points. Their backfield is split. Collier rolling right. 
Now he's going to run with it, and he's going to step out of bounds at the midfield stripe. He picked up five on the play. It'll be second and five. Mo Clemens chased him out of bounds. And that was a situation there. Collier would have thrown the football downfield, but we've seen consistently throughout this entire season the deep backs of the generals playing very well. He did not have that intermediate target, the intermediate receiver, so he ran the football instead and only got himself five yards. Now, that's another situation the generals can well afford now, but again, like Bob said, they don't want to give up the quick touchdown. But a thing here, Bob, we've never seen a general shut anybody out this year. That would be a big mark for them if they could shut this team down completely and not allow any points. Well, the generals held Portland to seven. That's not a shutout. Nope, that was a fourth quarter touchdown, if you recall, that the Portland club put on the board. Here's Collier now on second and five, rolling and throwing and completing it to Henry Odom out of the backfield to the 44-yard line of New Jersey, and that'll be good for the 11th first down for Orlando. The Generals have but 12. However, the Generals had 24 points. Orlando still looking for their first. It's not a matter of how many first downs you get. It's a matter of when you get them. I mean, the Generals, of course, have been much more efficient. Not totally, but there have been times when they've got the football. They've looked very, very well, driving the length of the field almost and getting the points they've got. 38,084 here at Giant Stadium. First Monday night game of the season. Generals lead it 24 to nothing. Collier with a single setback and flankers to the left and to the right. First and 10 at the New Jersey 44. And Collier is rushed by Jim Byrne. Lucky to get the pass away to Nizalik, who could not make the catch. It'll be third down and 10 to go. The first time tonight that the Generals got to Reggie Collier, and he had to get the ball off, as you described it, very quickly. But that was an excellent I got one out, one on rush by Jim Byrne. Well, I got to tell you, Bob, though, if, if, if Collier was right, all five wrong, linemen were wrong. And if he was wrong, all five linemen were right. He pulled out behind the center much sooner than the rest of the offensive yeah. linemen. And Byrne just went by his blocking tackle and got there right away. That was a miscue out there. And the only thing that saved it from going off side was the center, feeling that Kyer was going to pull away, snapped the ball to him. Everybody was in to keep him from going off side. Wilford Morgan, along with Joey Walters, flanked to the right. Stop, stop. Flanked to the left on a draw play to... Uh, Curtis Bledsoe, and Bledsoe bursts his way inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. A pickup of six on the play, making a third and four situation for the Orlando Renegades. Matty Ace made the tackle. Matty Ace comes in on the passing downs for big Mr. Weaver because he's a little bit quicker and he gives him more of a pass rush. That time he made a good play coming off the block thinking it was pass to make the tackle on the draw play. They call it third and five, and so we will too. At the 39-yard line, Bledsoe, the single setback, four wideouts, Wilford Morgan in motion to the near side. Collier back to throw. Collier being rushed, throwing behind the back of Jeff Smith at the 35-yard line. It's a fourth and five, setting up what we assume to be a punting situation. Well, I don't know. Maybe, okay, he's, he's moving the people in there, but I don't know why. When you're down like you are, 24 to nothing, why you'd want to bother punting the football. And you got to keep in mind here that this is the first series that the Renegades have had the football, and they've burned off a lot of time. There's only two minutes and 51 seconds left in the third quarter, and they are still 40 yards away from the score. Did a great job of killing the clock. Yes, they did. <laughs> 2.51 left to go, third quarter, Generals 24 set. Cater standing back at his own 44-yard line. Danny White, uh, Danny Knight awaiting the punt from Cater, who is going to look to deposit it in the coffin corner, and instead he plops it into the end zone for a touchback. The Generals will take over. First and 10 to go from their own 20-yard line with two minutes and 44 seconds left in the third quarter. New Jersey 24, Orlando nothing. We're at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, and we'll be right back. You get a lot when you buy Delco Performer Gas Cushion Shock Absorbers, the only shocks your car will ever need. You get shocks with a leak-proof gas-filled cell that eliminates shock fade, plus something extra. You get a big one-and-a-quarter-inch piston with more capacity than conventional one-inch shocks with something extra. You get a shock for all types of tires with special tuning for radials and something extra. You get a limited lifetime warranty and something extra. You get a 90-day free trial and something extra. The something extra? When you buy four Delco Performers at the regular price, you get a free athletic bag with a list price of $19.95. See your participating Delco retailer today for details of this exciting offer. For the name of your nearest Delco shock retailer, call toll-free 1-800-AC-DELCO and get something extra while supplies last. Generals 24, Orlando no score, 2.44 to go in quarter number three 
in a game that actually isn't as close as the scoreboard indicates. Actually, it uh, could well have been 31 to nothing or more as the Generals fumbled away a touchdown opportunity late in the first half. So now the Generals first and 10 for their own 20. Walker the single setback. Herschel with 130 yards already. Here's uh, a naked bootleg for Flutie. And Flutie is out to the 30-yard line, and it's good for the first down. 10 yards. Very surprised, though. I think that uh, that is not exactly what uh, <laughs> Paul Michaels wants. Doug Flutie tonight has taken upon himself when he bootlegs to run with the football and stay in bounds a little bit longer than Walt would like. That time he took a chance. He got a hit from West, the linebacker. Got good yardage. Well, maybe but I think he's got to realize he's got to slide and get out of bounds. Well, maybe, but maybe he saw he had seven guys in the line of scrimmage, all four defensive linemen and all linebackers. Figured if he got to that point and broke that plane, he might get some yards. He did get some yards, but that's a tough way to get him for a quarterback. Including seven carries, 68 yards tonight. Generals first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. Hand off to Carthen. Off left end and he picks up about three yards on the play and the tackle was made by Harold Randolph, the left side linebacker presenting the Generals with a second and seven situation at their own 33. That guy that is really a fullback. You know, he doesn't have the speed, of course, that Herschel Walker's got, but he's a durable kid, a durable guy. He's a guy you can count on. He's not going to fumble the football. Herschel doesn't fumble the football. Given the situation, he's only fumbled twice in all in this whole season. There's many times he's carried, but that walk, I mean, that Mo Carthen is really a good, good fullback, complimenting Herschel Walker. Seven carries, 29 yards for Carthen. General second and eight from the 32. Flutie back to throw, throwing on the run and throwing it wow. in front of Sam Bowers. It bounced in front of Bowers by about five yards. Bowers wow. coming from the left side, coming down from the right side, running upfield and then breaking it about 18 yards from the sideline was a little too deep, and Flutie threw the ball going towards the sideline. He should have got upfield a little more. He didn't have enough on it, and it fell short. Well, it fell short. There was a lot of defenders out there, and probably it's a good thing it did fall short. That's one of the first times we've seen in the last two or three ball games. Doug Flutie trying to force the action, trying to force the ball in there when the coverage was pretty good for the opposition. Carthen takes a powder, and Clarence Harmon checks into the lineup for the first time tonight. Marcus Anderson and Danny Knight are the wideouts. Generals third and eight from the 32. And Flutie is back to throw. Generals, I believe, jump the gun. Flutie throwing in and out of the hands of Herschel Walker at the 37-yard line. And Flutie got pounded pretty good after the uh, pass was uh, off. The defensive end, Kellen, came in and made the play. Sam Bowers jumped offside. And I think they're going to call it on number 64, Wayne Harris, also. So they had a miscue out there, as did the Renegades when they had the football. Penalty declined when they had the football. There was a miscue out there between the center and his offensive line because two guys were offside. Sam Bowers was one of them, and Wayne Harris, a right offensive guard, moved before the snap himself. Here's Rick Partridge, who is averaging 39 yards per punt this season. One punt tonight for 36 yards. And Victor Jackson is standing back at his own 25-yard line. Buck running 55 seconds ago in the third quarter. Generals with a cushy 24 to nothing lead. Awaiting the snap from center is Partridge. Big rush, but he's able to get the kick away. And Jackson fields it at the 30. Cuts at the 35-yard line. And he fumbled the ball, but out of bounds at the 40-yard line, where Orlando will take over first and 10 at their own 40, with 33 seconds to go in quarter number three. Generals lead 24 to nothing at Giants Stadium in the Meadowlands. And we'll be back on the New Jersey Generals Football Network. It's hotter than ever in Atlantic City. Trump Plaza Hotel Casino. Rising above the sea, it stimulates like nothing you've ever experienced. And best of all, this place is right in the center of the action. See for yourself. Trump Plaza. It's Atlantic City's centerpiece. Yeah. Trump will be joining us in the General's broadcast booth a little bit later on tonight. 
There are 33 seconds left in the third quarter. Generals lead 24 to nothing. Orlando with the ball, first and 10, at their own 40-yard line. Backfield is split. Collier back to throw, throwing to Nizalik, the tight end at the 44-yard line of Orlando. A pickup of four on the play. It'll be uh, second down and six to go. Right here is where Reggie Collier has got to get that ball downfield, but he doesn't have the confidence, nor can he find the people open. Again, it's a tribute to the Generals' deep backfield. They've done very well, and tonight they're missing their strong safety, John Preston, and he's being amply substituted four, and the Generals continue to play strong defense. Well, the gun has just sounded to end quarter number three. And the Generals still lead 24 to nothing here at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, and we'll be back. Organize a group from your church, synagogue, fraternal group, or club, and come see a Generals home game. See Doug Flutie, record-breaking Herschel Walker, and all the playoff-hungry Generals in person at Giant Stadium. Sunday, May 12th, Mother's Day at 2.30, Star Wars against the 84 champion Baltimore Stars. Saturday night, June 1st at 7 o'clock, the Generals host the Memphis Showboats with the USFL's number one passer, Walter Lewis. For group reservations, call Tom Medeiros at 1-800-KICKOFF. Reach for the star, do you trust your car? Reach for the star, do the products with the star. Reach for the star, the big bright Texaco star. If your car knocks, it's probably undernourished, so put it on a diet. Texaco's Super Unleaded Diet. It's got higher octane than regular unleaded to help knock out the knocks. Reach for the star, the big bright Texaco star. Welcome back to quarter number four in a game that the Generals have had in control from the outset. It is 24 for New Jersey. Nada for the Orlando Nada. Renegades. Who really haven't shown very much, and uh, their record coming into the game was two and seven. All things being equal, in about a half hour, they'll be two and eight. But yeah. you know, Charlie, the, the Renegades have not shown much tonight, but in the last month of the season, they've shown more offense against other teams. Teams like the Jacksonville Bulls, who beat them last week, but they moved the ball against them. Those are the kind of things that make this general's uh, effort tonight and over the last month so important, because once they get against teams that have been playing comparable opponents, you get a good line on how, good line on how much the generals have improved this year. Generals really have shown a steady improvement over the last month. And uh, next Sunday, we are in Jacksonville, where they are expecting fairly close to a sellout in Jacksonville. They are expecting somewhere between 70 and 80,000 for this game. And of course, when we were in Jacksonville a year ago, 73,000 to this date, the largest crowd in the history of the USFL. Second and six for the Renegades at their own 44-yard line. First play, fourth quarter, Collier back to throw. Collier throwing sideline for Jackie Flowers. And they got to go deep because they're trailing 24 0 They're in the fourth period. They got to get some points if they want to get back in this ball game. Well, we saw Donald Disney, the owner of the Orlando Renegades, at halftime. Not terribly pleased about the way his team has been playing, but happy like all of the other owners, save one, about the out outcome of the USFL meetings today. Pass to Joey Walters is incomplete but there is a flag on the play at the 49-yard line of New Jersey, and it looks like Jerry Holmes has been assessed with holding. Yeah, Jerry Holmes, of course, being completely on the other side of the field from where the ball was thrown. Collier threw it over to his right on the left side. That is holding, and that is an automatic first down. You know how he plays the defense. He plays it like they used to in the old AFL, where they had that bump and run protection. Oakland Raiders played it so very well. They put the in it. In fact, Oakland still does it. Then the Los Angeles Raiders now put that man right on that receiver and let him follow him foot step for step. That's what Jerry Holmes was playing like over here. Got caught for holding a good 40 yards away from where the ball ended up. Flowers, Walters, Smith, and Morgan. Four wideouts for Orlando. First and 10 at their own 49-yard line, 30 seconds into the fourth quarter. Collier back to throw. Collier is popped as he gets rid of the ball, and it is nearly intercepted by Jerry Holmes, but the pass was out of bounds. See, this is the problem with Jerry, with Reggie Collier. Reggie Collier is a great athlete, but he is not a great passer. He does not have the touch that's necessary to bring a club back like this. And that time he had a receiver open, but he just couldn't get him the football. He was also being rushed pretty good by Bobby Leopold. 
And Frank Matty Ace. Frank Matty Ace was all over Collier as well. If you're Jerry Goldstein, what do you think? It's 24 to nothing, fourth quarter, and you still haven't played. That means you're really second team, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's really second team. <laughs> That's really team. second team. And if you're Steve Bizarkowitz, there's no way, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> it's second and ten at the 49-yard line. Four wide right out. out. Collier is going to be uh, sacked by Bobby Leopold. Uh, Collier uh, stumbled as he took the snap from center. Never stood a chance, and Leopold was all over him like ugly on an ape. <laughs> Bobby Leopold helped him to the ground so he wouldn't hurt himself when he fell. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Okay. That's two sacks on the <laughs> evening. That's two sacks on the evening for the Generals against the quarterback, Kyer, Reggie Kyer. Okay. Well, I reckon at 24 to nothing, this constitutes a laugh for a long about here with 14 minutes left in the game and a clock running. It becomes a chucker, it really does. But you know how close it was? Right before the half, it could have been 10 to 7. Could have. Could have been. Could have, would have, and could have. Something we lived with the first year. Third and 20 for Orlando at their own 39. This time, Collier out of the shotgun. This time, Collier's just able to get rid of the ball, and it's intercepted by Gregory Johnson. Johnson returns it to the 44-yard line of New Jersey, and Reggie Collier was splattered at the 34-yard line, and he is face down and you on the Giant Stadium turf. And you also have a flag at this end against uh, Orlando. They're going to get caught for uh, for spearing Greg Johnson on his return. I got to tell you, it was Freddie Gilbert coming in, number 90, coming in from his left end, right defensive end position, and really hit Collier in the blind side. A very legitimate play because Collier... Was, had just in the process of throwing the football and was hit while he was throwing the football and went down and he's still down on the field. He was blindsided, as Dave said, by Freddie Gilbert and they are attending to him right now. We have a break in the action. 13 minutes, 42 seconds to go in the game. Generals 24. Orlando nothing. We're at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands and we'll be right back. new place in town, Trump Plaza Hotel Casino, a glittering world of glass, brass, and class. And best of all, this place is right in the center of the action. With the Tweety Birds circling <laughs> Reggie Collier's head, he is walking off the field ever so slowly now. But for those who don't like the violence of football, he is walking off the field. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so the Generals have the ball, first and ten at the Orlando 39, following the interception by Gregory Johnson. An additional 15 yards tacked on the play as a result of a spearing penalty assessed to Joel Patton, the right tackle, against Johnson on the return. So it's the Generals first and 10 at the Orlando 40-yard line. Walker and Carthen split in the backfield. Marcus Anderson is in the lineup along with Danny Knight as your wide receivers. Hand out to Carthen straight ahead. Carthen to the 37-yard line. And a pickup of three on the play. Let's call it second down and seven yards to go. Scott Hutchinson and David Graham getting off the pod. I think the question now is how long into this fourth quarter well, Michaels will go with Flutie and Walker and Carthon before he gets them out, knowing what's ahead of him over the next month of the season. Well, to answer Dave Herman's question of a few minutes ago. Oh, Here we go. Oh, we got, oh, my Muddle goodness. Huddle. We got the Muddle Huddle. Tower. Huddle. Tower. Oh, that's a, oh, oh, it's a little screen pass that Carthon dropped, and then it's picked up. It's an incomplete pass. Well, we hadn't seen that in a while, the old Muddle Huddle with only Kent Hall over the ball. Seven players all over to the left side, and behind that wall was Maurice Carthen. It would have been a great play except one thing. Carthen dropped the well, ball. Well, it was, and I'll tell you why he dropped it, too, because the ball was thrown low, 
and Doug Flutie got the ball from Ken Hall, the center. It was way high, so Doug had to jump up in the air, come down, get his footing set, throw it over there, threw it low. It was just a mixer play anyhow. That, there was nothing else to it, a mix-up play. Walt wants his opposition down the road to look at these. It things. works for me in Central Park. Uh, 50 to go, fourth quarter, General 24 zip, third and eight. At the 38-yard line, Flutie back to throw. Throwing quickly oh, off and it's intercepted by Jeff George. George has got nothing but real estate in front of him. George cuts back at the 25, still on his feet at the 20, 15-yard line, and he is down inside the 10-yard line. He fumbled the ball. And he fumbled the ball, and Doug Flutie picked it up. Oh. Up, they call it. He was down. Jeff George with a big interception, and there is an injured... Orlando Renegade all the way back at their own 40-yard line, but the Renegades have the ball. First and goal at the seven-yard line. Well, I guess it's all right to have a little fun out there, but what really takes the concentration off of your football team, and then Doug, like we've said so often, has not been forcing the football, and he absolutely did force the football on that last play, and a big turnover for the Washington, I mean Washington Federal, they look like the Federal, Orlando Renegades, and they are held now have an opportunity to put some points in the board. So the Renegades have the ball first and goal at the eight-yard line. Generals, however, with a commanding 24 to nothing lead with 12 minutes and 35 seconds left in the football game. It was a 57-yard return for George, and that was his fourth interception of the year. Well, the backs are to the wall now. The only thing they can, what they're playing for now, Charlie, and like I said before, they haven't had the shutout thus far this year, and what they're playing for now is the shutout, and it's really close to being away from them. They're, Orlando has football in great field position and have an opportunity of making some points here. Not at all concerned about winning the football game, just getting some points on the board. We go back We go back to that muddle-huddle play and the, the high snap from center. Dave Lapham has come in at center through that entire series. So you had the, the veteran coming in for Ken Hull, and he was the guy that was in there when that ball was a little high for Flutie as he tried to get it over to Carthen. Joining us in the Generals broadcast booth now is the owner of the Generals, Donald Trump. And we have had uh, virtually all of the owners come through the, uh, the broadcast booth tonight. And uh, Donald, let me ask you first and foremost about your reaction to the meeting today. And obviously you're pleased going to the fall beginning in 1986. Well, I am very pleased. I believe in fall football. I like I like class, whatever it might be, and, and football is meant to be played in the fall. We've done amazingly well with the generals. Our attendance is way up from last year and way, way up from the year before last. But I, I know that we're even going to do better. I don't know if you just heard, but we made a, a little slight challenge to our NFL neighbors, and I want to see whether or not they can stop Doug Flutie and Herschel Walker. What is that challenge, what, both Giants and Jets? Well, it's a, it's a charity, and we will we'll see what happens really at the appropriate time. But you can't challenge when we're playing in different seasons, and we'll, be plenty, we'll have plenty of challenges in the fall. <laughs> I guess you will. <laughs> we'll be back with Donald in just a moment. Jerry Goldstein is now in as quarterback. Reggie Collier got his bell rung pretty good in the last series of plays. First and goal from the eight. Goldstein back to throw. Throwing quickly for Jackie Flowers. Touchdown, Orlando. But hold the phone. Flag on the play in the end zone. And I think Joey Walters is going to be called for offensive interference. Yes, he is. That's exactly the call. Flag on the play. This is Bill Parkinson, the referee. Parents on the offense, number 17. Yeah. Take it down. Absolutely. The kind of exact play you called, Charlie. Joey Walters. Even though he wasn't involved, they called for the offensive pass interference and negates that touchdown. A big break for the Generals as far as their shutout bid goes. So it will be second down and goal from the 18-yard line, a loss of down. The other question, Donald, that immediately comes to mind, where will the Generals play? At the Meadowlands. We fully expect to play at the Meadowlands. We're working with the officials right now, and they've been super to us. And the fans have been just incredible out here, and we're going to be right at the Meadowlands. Goldstein out of the shotgun, throwing in the end zone for Joey Walters. Touchdown! Oh, what a brilliant catch by Joey Walters in the corner of the end zone. The fact that he was able to keep both feet inbounds with that catch, quite a story in and of itself. And finally, Orlando is on the board, but the Generals still lead 24-6. An outstanding throw out there, a pass out there, I should say, by Jerry Goldstein, the quarterback replacing Reggie Collier. 
and put the ball right over the top of Walter's shoulders, and he came down inside. Had the possession. When he caught the ball, all you had to do was have possession inside the, inside the end zone, and you get the seven points. And so we got uh, Jeff Brockhouse, who uh, came through the general's camp from time to time. With the extra point try now for Orlando. The snap, the place, the kick is up. It is good. And we have a break in the action. 11.53 to go in the football game. Generals 24, Orlando 7. We'll be back with more with Donald Trump and more of the football game in just a minute from the Meadowlands. We'll be back on the New Jersey Generals Football Network. Happy birthday, Thunderbird. That's right, it's T-Bird's birthday, but you get to open the presents. Right now, during your Ford dealer's Thunderbird birthday party, you can save hundreds on every new Ford car or truck in stock. Open a special LTD Brome package and get $926 off on a four-door LTD. Equipped with air conditioning, AM, FM stereo, tilt steering wheels, speed control, and more. Savings based on manufacturer's suggested retail price of option package as compared to pricing of options purchased separately. So see your Ford dealer today for Thunderbird birthday savings on a luxuriously equipped LTD. But hurry, because come May 1st, the party's over. Jeff Brockhouse making his way toward the football. It's a squib kick fielded by Rod Pekis at his 10-yard line. Pekis straight ahead to the 15, 20, to the 30-yard line. Brought down at the 31, where it'll be first and 10 to go. Generals leading 24-7, 11.45 to go in quarter number four. And there is a flag on the play, and apparently offsides against Orlando. They're having problems getting the kickoff right there. <laughs> no, they had a lot of problems coming in here. Now, not many of them got solved thus far tonight. <laughs> I think not. In any event, back to the matters at hand with Donald Trump. It seemed as if coming out of the meeting today, or at least going into the meeting, nobody really seemed to be quite sure what the outcome would be. But it seemed like you all came out as a fairly united front. Well, I was pretty sure, and I'd read these reports, and I don't know where the reporters got their information, because let's say 10 teams wanted to go to the uh, spring, and, and I knew that they didn't. But I read what I read. First and 10 for the Generals at their own 32-yard line. Walker and Carthen line up in the I formation. Flutie calling signals, one flanker off to the left side. Flutie hands to Herschel, running left in front of Mo Carthock. Walker turning the corner and his run out of bounds at the 38-yard line, a pickup of six on the play. Harold Randolph ran him out. It'll be second down and four to go. Now the question becomes, where will you be televised? And what days of the week will you be able to play here at Giant Stadium? Well, as you know, we have Sunday and we have an exemption to play on Saturday. And the Saturday exemption is very important. It is a very vital, vital situation, and we have that. We have the option of playing during the week, Sunday evenings. But that Saturday day and maybe Friday evenings, we have some wonderful times to play. General second and three at their own 39-yard line, leading 24-7 with 11 minutes, 15 seconds to go on the game. Walker first his way straight ahead. He's got the first down and then sub brought down at the 44-yard line. Must be enjoying watching Herschel run this year. Well, he's the greatest. I mean, he could be the greatest of all time. And as you know, we made that little challenge before to our neighbors. And I'd like to see them try and stop Hers trying to stop Herschel Walker. It'd be very interesting. Well, I'm not sure that they can. I don't know. Not too many people have had success trying to stop Herschel Walker throughout this entire year. And you know they gear their defense for it. And they're not that successful. Herschel is just an outstanding football player. Walker, 21 carries, 146 yards. Clock running, 10.35 to go in the game. Generals 24-7. First and 10 from their own 45. Flutie back to throw. Flutie with time. Going long down the field for Danny Knight. They overthrew him at the 20 yards. Well, there was a mix-up on that play. I think Knight was trying to run a post corner, and instead of breaking back out to the sideline where Flutie put the ball, he stayed on the post course. And that's part of the problem. Danny Knight has not seen much action of late as an offensive receiver for the Generals. Second and 10 at the 45-yard line. As far as television is concerned, Donald, a lot of people are going to wonder where and how they're going to be able to see the games and where and how you're all going to make some money. Well, you have a lot of options coming up, and you have a very good chance for 
an NFL strike as an example in 1987. And I think after the monopoly stops in terms of 1986, hopefully it will stop with the networks. We'll have our options with the networks also. Second and 10 at the 45-yard line. Flutie out of the shotgun. Flutie with time. Setting up a screen for Walker. Walker dips, he doodles at the 40, and he goes down at the 40-yard line. Flag on the play, however. A loss of five if the play stands, but there is a flag on the play. The flag is against Vince Stroke, yes. the, the left guard who got downfield about five yards before the play was, the pass was completed. All right. With the loss on it, it'll be interesting to see what Orlando decides to do here. Downfield, that's a loss of down. All right, so that will set up a uh, third down and long for New Jersey. Donald, as far as TV, however, uh, at the moment, obviously, no network for 86. How then does the league plan to get the uh, games from the stadium to home? What seems to be happening, we've had tremendous offers of, of great syndications. We also have interest from certain networks, although you're going to find that a little bit strange to hear. But we have some very interesting things cooking, Charlie, and I think you're going to be finding out over the relatively short period of time. It's a lot of interest in the league. So the Generals now third and 20, back at their own 35-yard line. Herschel the single setback, and he gets a handoff on a little draw play. Walker bursts his way over the 45 to the 48-yard line. He'll be well short of the first down, but Walker picks up another 13 yards, so he's up to about 159 on 22 carries. He has a great ability when he doesn't have to take a guy head on. He can drop his shoulder and slip between the tacklers, but then when he does take a guy on, they really pay for it. Herschel Walker is playing at one of his better games here again tonight. Clock continues to run. Nine minutes and 20 seconds left. Partridge with a high floating punt. Victor Jackson will be forced to fair catch all the way back at his 13-yard line. Breaking the action. 9-16 to go in the game. Generals 24, Orlando 7. We're at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, and we'll be back in a minute. Hey, Cab. Bob Hope. Hi. You better put on these earmuffs to drown out the engine knocks. Hey, you don't need earmuffs. You need star power. Texaco Star Power, the higher octane in Texaco Super Unleaded that can help knock out the knocks. Hey, Cab. Hello again, Mr. Hope. You know, the engine's so quiet, now I can tell you some of my jokes. You still have those earmuffs? Want to be in command of the road for as long as you own your car? If so, see your local AC Delco dealer for a new set of Delco Performer shock absorbers. Delco Performers are gas cushioned to provide responsive handling by virtually eliminating shock lag under normal and high-performance driving conditions. And Delco Performers come with a limited lifetime warranty. That's why AC Delco says they're the only shocks your car will ever need. Ask for details, and for a lifetime of smooth rides, get a set of gas cushioned Delco Performer shocks. AC Delco, the smart parts. Available at Burak Chevrolet and Olds, 15 Booten Turnpike in Lincoln Park. Nine minutes, 16 seconds left in the game. Generals 24, Orlando 7, Renegades with the ball, first and 10, all the way back to their own 14-yard line. Since the loss in Arizona, the Generals really have come of age. And I guess, Donald, you have to be awfully pleased the way this team has been looking, not only in, in the fact that they are winning, but the way they have been winning. They've been looking super, but they've been giving the ball to Herschel Walker. That was a game that was very frightening in the sense that they didn't give the ball. You go ahead with the play. All right, Goldstein back to throw, throwing over the middle, and he completes it to Joey Walters to the 35-yard line. Not a bad color guy either, no? <laughs> get the ball, boom, get the play-by-play -play in, you got it, and you're back again. And nobody nobody to compete with you two, Jeff. You. <laughs> you got other things, right? <laughs> anyway, but, but the way the generals have played on both sides of the football, certainly Herschel has been a story. But the offensive line has come on and done the job. And defensively now, they're beginning to get the other guys out. They've really been super. They've been great. The fans love them. Goldstein now out of the shotgun. First and 10. Orlando at their own 35-yard line. Goldstein with time to throw. Throwing long down the sideline for Jackie Flowers. But the pass is out of bounds and thus incomplete. It'll be second down and 10 at the 35-yard line. So all in all, you have to be terribly pleased with the way things turned out today. Well, Charlie, as you and Dave know, before I had this team, it was really a disaster. You had some long, long days up here, and the fans had lost interest in it, frankly. They were losing, and they were losing big. And we put some players in there, and we have an excellent coach and an excellent group of people, and uh, they, are, they are looking pretty tough. They've been a tough team for 
for well, two years now. Well, wow, now they sure have. Second and ten at the 35-yard line. Once again, Goldstein out of the shotgun with four wideouts. Goldstein back to throw. Throwing sideline, incomplete intended for Joey Walters at the midfield stripe, but tipped away at the last second by Danell Daniel. Then you've got a flag on the play here, probably holding against Orlando. Goldstein strictly a drop-back passer. It was not holding, Bob. It was in roughing the passer after the ball was thrown. The generals are coming in. That's all they're playing now is a passing situation, trying their best to get there. That time they had an end tackle game. The tackle stunted outside the defensive end. Freddie Gilbert come up on the inside, and after Goldstein, at least it was determined by the official, after he threw the football, he was hit, knocked to the ground. They called it an uh, unnecessary roughness of the passer, giving the first down on the 50-yard line, right in the middle of the field. They intentionally grounded Goldstein. Yes, they did. Post-game phone show coming up immediately following our broadcast at 212-489-WMCA. 212-489-WMCA. And, of course, we welcome the calls from Boston over WMRE. 7.45 to go. First and 10 for the 50. Goldstein back to throw. He completes it to Nizalik, the tight end, at the 45-yard line of New Jersey. A pickup of five on the play. It'll be second down and five yards to go. Chicago will be back in the league next year. Is that right, Donald? They will be back in the league next year, Charlie. And we have a great owner, Eddie Einhorn. And he's got a group, and they own the, uh, as you know, they own the White Sox. And uh, they've, they've, been, uh, they've been very positive. They only want full football. And apparently that's what they're going to get. That's what they're going to be getting. But minus, however, uh, the Tampa Bay Bandits. Well, I think that's a positive as far as I'm concerned. All right, we'll get back to that in a minute. Second and four from the 44-yard line. Goldstein back to throw. Goldstein with time. Pitching it long downfield to nobody in particular. The closest man to the football was Gregory Johnson all the way back at the five-yard line. The closest intended receiver, Jerry Parrish, is about 20 yards off the ball. Great play by Jerry Holmes, though. There's the difference on yeah. the corner. Jerry Holmes held up both Parrish and Joey Walters, did not permit him to get deep. Goldstein threw the ball away. Now, as far as the Tampa Bay Bandits are concerned, they were drawing pretty well down there. Yet, uh, for reasons uh, that uh, John Bassett can best describe, he has opted to stay in, in the springtime. And at the moment, I guess he's guaranteed of a playoff spot next spring because he's going to be the only one playing there. We'll talk about that in a second. On third and four at the 44-yard line, Goldstein is back to throw. Goldstein with time, lots of time, throwing it out of the backfield, and it's nearly intercepted by Bobby Leopold at the 39-yard line. It'll be fourth and four from the 44. Back to your thoughts about Tampa Bay and Bassett. Well, John Bassett's got his, he's really got his own agenda, frankly, and John is, uh, is one of the founders of the World Football League, and we haven't been losers in life, and we don't intend to be. And frankly, John is, uh, at this moment, John is just the spring man, and he felt strongly about the World Football League, he feels strongly about spring football, and that's all I can say. And so on that uh, third and four pass situation, it was holding against the general's defensive holding. It's a five-yard penalty, automatic first down. So it's Orlando first and 10 at the general 40-yard line. Generals lead 24 to 7 with six minutes, 35 seconds to go in the game, and the clock continues to run. Now they're in the I formation, interestingly enough, and Goldstein is back to throw. Throwing a fly pattern for Joey Walters, and in and out of Walters' hands at the five-yard line, step for step, Jerry Holmes. Donald, I can, I can understand why and how football, you mentioned that one window you have open on Saturday afternoon. I can understand how it would be accepted here in New York, maybe in Chicago, but how about Birmingham and some of those cities where college football seems to reign supreme? What's your research tell you about that? I believe it's not research, it's instinct, and I believe from my own standpoint they'll do better. Now, they've been doing, certain teams have done very well. Certain of the Sun Belt teams have done very well. As well as they've done, they'll do better in the traditional football season. Okay. Charlie, here we go again. Shotgun, shotgun formation. Second and ten from the 40-yard line. Parrish in motion to the far side. Goldstein back to throw. Goldstein with time. Throwing sideline. Incomplete intended for Wilford Morgan at the 35-yard line. And once again, oh. Jerry Holmes is all over his man. He's, what become, what? he's become a one-man show, hasn't he, Bob? Well, the story we've said all season is he's that really Jerry Holmes has, has caught this defen defensive secondary together. The confidence he has, the experience, and everybody plays to his level. That's the difference. Jerry Holmes just runs. He, he has the instincts. As Donald Trump talks about instincts, he has the instincts to play defense as well as anybody I've seen in this league. Orlando, third and ten at the 40. At the general 40-yard line, Parrish in motion to the far side. Goldstein out of the shotgun. Goldstein being chased. Goldstein being sacked all the way back at the 49-yard line. 
It was Freddie Gilbert, Frank Mattias, Bobby Leopold, and Jim Byrne getting off the box. Bobby Leopold coming from his linebacker position. You don't see Bobby Leopold blitz that often. And he came through Scott Free. Again, a mix-up on that offensive line. They've got to pick them all up from the inside out. And they obviously didn't. They let Leopold come Scott Free through there. And he threw the quarterback, Jerry Goldstein, down for a big loss. That is the general's third sack of the evening. The Jersey 24, Orlando 7. Six minutes left in the game. Greg Cater to punt it away. Fourth and 21. Line of scrimmage, Orlando's 49-yard line. Good snap from center. Cater. Angling it for the side. It bounces at the 10, and Danny Knight fields it on one hop. And Danny Knight is still on his feet. Finally, he goes down at the 14-yard line. I suspect Danny Knight had it to do over again. He would have let it bounce. Well, I don't know. He did let the thing bounce, Charlie, but he, a good yeah. heads-up play on his part. Got the ball from the end down inside the 10-yard line. They brought it back as far as they could. Breaking the action, 5.49 to go. Quarter number four. Generals 24, Orlando 7. We're at Giants Stadium in the Meadowlands, and we'll be back on the New Jersey Generals Football Network. Are you concerned about the cost of heating or cooling your home? Half you are. PSENG, Public Service Electric and Gas Company of New Jersey, has a solution. PSENG will send an energy specialist to check out your home from basement to attic to look for energy leaks. You'll then receive a computerized report on exactly where your home is losing energy and what you can do about it. Cost of the service, only $15. With the report, you also receive a free energy savings kit so you can begin to stop those energy leaks right now. Call the PSENG Energy Conservation Center toll-free at 1-800-854-4444 and ask about the home energy survey. And look for more information about the survey in this month's public service mailing. Remember, the number to call is 1-800-854-4444. One 1-800-854-4444. 5.49 to go in the game. Generals lead it 24-7. Donald Trump, thank you again for stopping up in the booth and... Uh, Good luck in the fall of 86. Thank you very much, Charlie. And we appreciate you guys are doing a fabulous job for us, and we appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Donald Trump, very much in the news these days. Generals now with the ball, first and 10, back at their own 15-yard line. Hand off to Mo Carthon, off left tackle. Carthon pulling his way to the 21-yard line, a pickup of six. Second down and four to go. Bernard West. Right side linebacker out of North Texas State made the tackle. Now we've got substitutions in the, in the game for the Generals on offense. At center we have Dave Lapham, Tony Osborne at left tackle, John Jewell is at right guard, and at the tailback position for Herschel Walker, Rod Pickies. Well, we were kidding about Jerry Goldstein before, and Goldstein now has a nice bag on his uh, left hand. Steve Pizarkowitz, who we were kidding about even more earlier before, has his helmet on. And we may see, I think for the first time in the three years we've been broadcasting together, Dave and Bob, a third-string quarterback actually come in and play. Here's Rod Pegues with the handoff. They've given Herschel the rest of the evening off. Pegues out over the 25 to about the 29-yard line. A pickup of seven. He needed three for the first downs so of the Generals record their 16th first down of the evening. Well, whatever happened, Charlie, to the time when he used to take the players out one by one and let the crowd cheer and all that, you know. Now they just take him out on the sideline. Nobody knows he's missing. Well, it. most of the crowd's also <laughs> headed to the parking lot by now, too. Rod Pegues. Herschel not... retires for the evening. 22 carries, 159 yards. That gives him 1,100 and... Uh, think, 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 think. Quick, quick. This is pressure. 65. Good. Thank you. Clock running, 3.55 to go in the game. Carthen with the hand up. Carthen goes nowhere. He is brought down after maybe gaining two on the play. It'll be second and eight. Bernard West again in on the tackle. Well, Donald and uh, all of the owners certainly have put on a very united front, Dave and Bob. They've come out of this, well, uh, they have. this Armageddon-type meeting that was certainly this morning into one that was certainly well, a unifying factor by the end of the day. Let me tell you, there's one guy, there's one guy in this league you can put it together and hold it together. It's Donald Trump. You know, we were talking uh, <laughs> before the game, uh, Donald was explaining the new deal that he made down in Atlantic City. Yes, yes. Uh, he bought yet another casino. <laughs> yes. He bought it from Baron Hilton. One of my personal friends, I know. Second and eight from the 30. Generals leading 24-7. Pitch out to McGee's running off left tackle. McGee's looking to turn the corner. He can't. He's brought down at the 31. McGee's is a mortal human being. We get used to seeing uh, Herschel so often that uh, McGee's is brought down. 
picked up a couple on the play, third and six at the 32. So routinely, you know, he purchases a $350 million hotel, ba bum ba bum ba bum and then another day he comes in and saves the lead. Well, you know, getting back to the comments, you've had a lot of owners on, and uh, of course, Don Klosterman. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, I, I ran into Peter Hadhazy down here before the game, and he was absolutely enthusiastic and ecstatic about the way Harry Usher conducted these That's meetings. That's what I heard. So I think we've come away, they've come away, not only the owners, but people who have been in pro football a long time, like Pete Hadhazy, very impressed with what they accomplished today. What the league needed was a leader, and apparently Harry Usher, our halftime guest, has provided that leadership. Here's Flutie. Doing some dipsy doodling at the 30, looking for the sideline. Oh, down he goes at the 30-yard line. He must have run about 45 yards and lost two on the play. I think he ran 35 seconds at 45 <laughs> yards. I'll see you guys up there. But right. I tell you, that's the way to get it going. Bob Cassiola, when he begins to make his uh, ascent up to the broadcast booth, we know that the game is pretty well in hand. And it has been, frankly, all night long with the Generals leading. 24-7, to 7. 2 minutes, 9 seconds to go on the game at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, and we'll be back. Alfa Romeo says, enough. It's time the rich and famous stopped hoarding these prestigious machines and having all the fun. It's time you had your turn. Introducing the graduate from Alfa Romeo. Two concert seats, a two-liter engine, disc brakes on all four wheels, five-speed transmission, and styling that is legendary with Alfa. Power performance, the driving joy of a world-class sporting car. The price, $13,495, low enough to bring one of racing's great marks into your own garage. In addition, your tri-state Alfa Romeo dealers offer a six-year, 60,000-mile optional warranty beyond the standard 3 and 36 warranty. Visit your tri-state Alfa Romeo dealer and test drive the graduates. Optional equipment, transportation, preparation, taxes, and licensing extra. And while you're there, mention the generals and pick up your free gift. Generals fourth and eight at their own 30-yard line. Archer gets a pretty punt off that Victor Jackson will field back at his own 27-yard line. Cutting at the 30, and Danny goes at the 33. Giant Stadium has emptied out pretty well now. We had a crowd of 38,084. And we probably have about 384 left in the park as we have arrived at the two-minute warning. Two minutes left in the game at Giant Stadium with the Generals leading 24 to 7. Don't forget, we've got the post-game phone show coming up immediately following our broadcast at area code 212-489-WMCA. For those of you listening throughout New England, give us a call at 212-489-WMCA. Steve Pazarkowicz, you may remember him playing for the St. Louis Cardinals, the taxi quarterback. Now, the rule in the USFL, you've got two quarterbacks who are active for a given game. You have then a third-string quarterback who can only play if the first two are down and out and through for the day. Thus, Steve Pazarkowicz is in the lineup. Now, you, you may be asking yourself, who is the general's third-string quarterback? You may be asking yourself who the second-string quarterback is. Doug Flutie, of course, is the uh, starter and has seen virtually every play this year. Ron Reeves is the general second-string quarterback. Only if Flutie and Reeves went down would we ever see a gentleman by the name of Fred Hessen. Fred Hessen is a six-foot quarterback who played at, at the taxi squad, developmental squad, if you will, in the USFL the first two seasons with the Philadelphia Stars. He even possesses a championship ring, although he has never seen a play in the USFL in his first two years. Fred Hessen is the general's developmental quarterback. Does he have a night job? <laughs> How much money did you make for the third state quarterback in this league? Must have a night job to keep him going. First and 10 is terrible. First and 10 at the 33. Minute 58 left in the game, and Pizarco is throwing for the first time. Throwing long sideline for Wilfred Morgan. Flag on the play. It will be interference against Harry Daniels. Ron Reeves is now quarterbacking for the Generals. Mr. Flutie has taken a powder for the rest of the evening. Minute 43 left in the game. Hand off to Mo Carthon, who will get to the line of scrimmage and on a second effort. Make it to Orlando. Pick up two, second and eight, as the clock continues to run with a minute and a half. I'm sure there's some people with, from whom this room is known to like to see Mo Carthon take a rest, wouldn't you think? <laughs> <laughs> The Generals tonight with four interceptions. That ties a record for most interceptions in one game by the Generals. They did that against Los Angeles two years ago here at Giant Stadium. The 
So the Generals' unbeaten string this year at home continues. Less than a minute to go now. Second and eight at the 48. Reeves, uh-oh, broken play. Reeves, we have just learned, is not Doug Flutie, but he's still on his feet. There goes Reeves. Reeves is still on his feet inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. There goes Reeves to one knee, and that will do it. We have come to the end. Mercifully for the Orlando Renegades, happily for the New Jersey Generals. The Generals improved their record to 7-3 and three and are now in a three-way tie for first place. You're listening to New Jersey Generals football on WMCA New York. Brought to you in part by the Alfa Romeo Presidents Group. Automobiles built for the fun-loving rich and you, if you hurry. Orlando Renegades. The Renegades record drops to two up and uh, eight down, while the Generals improve their record to six and three. It was a dominating victory for the Generals, really, on both sides of the football. It really was a dominating victory for the Generals on both sides of the football, especially in the running department. 36 yards total rushing by the Renegades. Good defense for the Generals. 291 yards for the Generals' rushing attack here this evening. An outstanding job by that running game. And Flutie, of course, ran the football very well, but he threw the ball six, seven out of 16 times for 109 yards. He had the one INT, which takes a little bit away from it. But the mix and match between the running game and the passing game for the Generals has worked another time here this evening. I guarantee you we will see on the highlight film next year the touchdown pass from Doug Flutie to Sam Bowers. 212-489-WMCA is the number for the postgame phone show, and we'll start that up in just a couple of minutes. Final score here once again, Generals 24, Orlando 7. We're at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, and you're listening to the New Jersey Generals Football Network. <laughs> 